Oh, you don't have a notepad? Oh, okay. Got it. Okay, cool. Sue's all set. Sue's here. She's good. Videos, videos, So we've reached our appointed hour. We have a quorum for the planning board. I see lots of new faces here, so I'll introduce myself. I'm Tony Glenn. I'm the chair. Leslie. I'm Leslie Glenn. I'm a member. I'm the chef. And online we have. Sue Zacharias is online. Sue Zacharias is online. Sue Zacharias, I'm here, present. Virtual. <laughs> <laughs> and Steve Oppenheimer is going to join us in a minute. He's a little bit late because of the train. So, welcome. Uh, so, as I look at our agenda, our um, first agenda item is public comment. Is there any comments on matters that are not on the agenda for tonight? Yes. So, um, Barbara Fuller does three with the street. Hi, Barbara. Uh, one of the previous meetings I was at, maybe it may have been your. You guys have so many meetings, I can't keep track. Yeah. Maybe a month ago you were talking about Route 30, and you were saying that you would like more information about what they're planning at the Traffic and Sidewalk Committee for Route 30 and have a maybe a conversation with the company that's making up the plan. Sure. But you were reluctant to do that because that's like traffic and it's not under your jurisdiction. Jurisdiction, but right. then I thought later. I thought the planning board is supposed to be in charge of scenic roads, and Route 30 is a scenic road. So, doesn't that bring it more into your area of interest? It's a state highway, so it's not under our jurisdiction. No, but it's listed under Western Scenic Roads. We were mistaken, and uh, it's in there. I don't think it should have come out of the uh, website. That was, that was called to our attention a couple of years ago. So. Oh, okay. So let's right. make sure that comes out. Uh, you mind, can you? But we're still, yeah, we're still open-minded. If the engineering firm or the organization that has jurisdiction over that wishes to come before the planning board and get feedback, I think you and I was going to try to get in touch with them if we're going to have a public meeting. But it's the idea is it's their decision, not ours. Tom, did you have to just so you know, yeah, at sure. some point they, they will be coming before the planning oh, board just fantastic. just to discuss the project. I think perfect. right now it's being vetted by traffic and sidewalk. Oh, perfect. Um, and, and they're in draft, right? From the draft stage right now, so okay, great. Right. They need to vet some issues before it all okay. Tremendous. Your wish is please identify yourself. Tom, tell them. You can have your direct. So, uh, your wish is Tom's command. Thanks, Tom. <laughs> yeah. Any other comments? Okay, we'll proceed with the published agenda. Um, Dima, would you like to put up the slide? Please? Yes, I will. Okay, I think the topic that um, people are mostly here for, my guess, is the tree conversation. So uh, I really appreciate the interest, and I'm really excited to help with this discussion here. Um, <coughs> the, um, the discussion is, um, when we say a holistic discussion on preserving the tree canopy, sounds pretty complicated. People ask me what I mean by, or what do we mean by Holistic. And by holistic, we mean uh, a couple things. First of all, trees on private land and trees on public land, it's pretty hard to consider one and not the other. So we decided to do that together. And there's been lots of great work and conversations in the, in the past about trees and what we can do to preserve things. But we'll, what we want to do going forward is to engage all the key organizations that have the ability to think through and implement some of these plans. So by holistic, we mean all the key organizations, and that includes the course tag, the select board, DPW, and the planning board. So we're all engaged here tonight. Uh, Tom is here from DPW. Chris is from the select board. We have Lori and I'm sure other tag members in the audience, and of course we have our friends from the planning board here. So um, I want to emphasize that this follows, you know, I was thinking years when I was putting the slide together, it's like years of great work, it's like decades probably of great work that I'm not aware of, but sort of I'm a little bit late to this game in the last five years since I've gone to the planning board, I've been a little bit sensitized to it, 
in, in fact, more recently, just in conversations with Leslie and some of her thoughts on Most motivating this kind of action. But then, also, the Shin Tzu. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I wanted to also let people know that there was some really um, positive initial discussions we had about two weeks ago with this same combination of people that led to the meeting today to sort of put, <clears throat> put together a, today's agenda. So, you know, I think everybody's all, you know, buttoned up and eager and, um, and behind the kind of things that we're talking about today. So the agenda that will follow is uh, Leslie's going to bring us back to the motivations of why we care, you know, why this is so important to our community. And um, then Emai's going to follow with sort of a balancing act, just like, and the practicalities of preserving trees kind of thing. Uh, and then uh, Tom's going to enlighten us on the DPW, today's procedures from DPW to manage right-of-way trees. Uh, we had a great initial conversations. So I think people would be really excited to hear about that. And then uh, when the group got together the last time, this quartet that I keep mentioning, uh, we had this idea of how to go forward was through mostly two what we call working groups. Uh, and that is, uh, again, the quartet would be leading us. And we have a working group for some decisions on um, how to handle this issue on trees for public land. So, and today, we're not going to try to run that work group. We're going to brainstorm on what that work group could be and maybe provide them with some seed ideas on how to proceed. And I'll have some more thoughts on that in the future. And then do the same thing for the private land. You know, so I think there's been good discussions on thinking through perhaps a proposed bylaw. Some really good work has been done on that. So this group will take that effort, do some more things, and run with it. And we'll use today to sort of brainstorm on that and seed them with ideas and get some maybe initial thoughts with people who you know might be a part of that working group. Is that fair, Lori? Is that mm -hmm. kind of what we wanted to do today? Chris, is that a yep. fair yep. assessment? Um, and Tom, you're okay with that? Sure. Okay, so we're all on board. So with that, um, I also wanted, wait, I have a front right picture there. I wanted to pay tribute to, I think it's <laughs> Weston's most excellent tree. I think there was a tree. Was this true, Nina, that there was a most excellent tree that was pointed out? Is Tom, is that in your yes. evaluation? Yes. And it was noted on the West 10 News Report that that tree was interviewed by Alicia. So <laughs> by all means, go Not take a look me. at that. Allison. 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 Sorry, Allison. Yeah, Allison. 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 Yeah. Allison. Yeah. Allison. Fantastic interview. <laughs> Didn't have a lot to say, but had some, a tree of few words, let's say. Uh, so Leslie, why don't you take over? Take us um, some motivation. Go ahead. Sure. Um, hey, Mike, so, Yep. Hi. She wants to see the slides. Okay. You see it from this one? Right. Yeah. Good. So we're going to go through some very basic um, tenants here, but you know why are trees important? Well, you know um, they help make Weston the wonderful semi-rural town we all want to live in. Um, they provide places for our kids to play. Um, they reduce rainwater runoff and erosion. And I looked up a little bit more about this, and um, they basically not only collect the water, but they purify the water before it goes into our streams and into our, um, our lakes. Uh, they provide natural shading and coolant, and this is not only just from providing this shade from a canopy, it also is because when the leaves evaporate water through, you know, what, uh, out of there, they provide cooling uh, through t uh, transpiration. And they store carbon. We are trying to collect carbon now, and they're storing carbon to keeping it out of our atmosphere. They reduce air pollution and they mitigate noise. And we are getting noisier as we get more crowded in Western. Uh, and they provide and uh, protect wildlife habitat. Um, they also provide the natural privacy screens and buffers, which do increase our, our uh, property values. So if you're getting bigger and bigger houses and we're getting you know, larger houses that are actually approaching commercial size, we're maintaining those vegetative screens that protect, protect our views and our, and our privacy. Want to go to the next slide? Thanks. So what exactly is happening now that's different? Well, it's climate change. It's bringing in new invasive diseases and insects, some of the ones that we've had for years, like the gypsy moth. Others are pretty new, like the emerald borer and the um, longhorned Asian beetle. And they're doing you know, a lot of devastation in various areas. As a matter of fact, the emerald borer right now is in Wayland, let's see, Lexington, and Waltham. So it's moving right towards us. 
Um, and we're getting excessive tree cutting, and it's occurring with regularity, and it doesn't fall under the jurisdiction of any other town province. I'm not under stormwater management or anything like that. Um, and often when you get excessive tree cutting, you're also getting lawn planting. And as we're all finding out, Weston right now is the highest uh, town in the Commonwealth as far as municipal use of water per person. Um, there are also gas leaks, and they are compromising our roadside trees. Other towns like Concord and Wellesley are realizing the importance of green buffers and tree protection, and they've begun to initiate some bylaws. Um, one of the things also is a lot of our native trees you know, might not be native in 20, 30 years, and that's how long it takes for a tree to grow. So we should be looking at perhaps different species that we should be growing in this, in this climate niche. And you know, the, our green canopy is not only important to Weston, it's important regionally. When you look at the towns with a canopy that's left around Boston and the hub, you know, we're one of the few ones right around 128. So um, you want to go to the next slide? So, you know, why should it be concerned? Well, you, you, you look at a lot of these, but it comes down to the fact you can cut down a tree in about an hour and it takes 20 years to grow it back. So it's not like your lawn or you put a couple shrubs in or you can put in a big tree. Even if you put in a big tree, you know, it's going to take years for it to grow and the bigger the tree you put in, the slower it grows. Um, and, you know, when you, buy, when you buy a house in Weston, you buy the street and you buy the town. And that means you're buying the neighborhood and we don't get the whole, the whole environment. Um, and often, you know, what will happen is we're getting properties that are being flooded, which hadn't been flooded before, whether that's climate change, whether it's development, you know, that, that, that uh, vote is still out, but there's an investigation being done by the planning board and others in town. Um, the DPW, I think, quite rightfully, is developing new sidewalk and street drainage systems. And they're being installed, but they also are going to affect our tree canopy, so we want to do that in unison as an integrated strategy and design approach. Um, and the other thing that's happening is we grow more lawns, we're getting more fertilizer, which is, you know, causing more algae blooms. It's a, it's a terrible cycle we really need to break. And trees really are a town asset. And it's part of our infrastructure, just like our schools or anything else. And I think it requires proper management. I think that's, that's good. good. Any, um, any feedback from the audience on the motivation? Did we miss anything? Or? a perspective on things. Diana? Um, I, Diana Chaplin, I just wanted you to comment on the excessive cutting that you're describing. Is this something that's actually being measured with data, or is this a perception of excessive cutting? This is something we're right on the edge of being able to measure. There is a program that UMass has put out, oh, I don't know, five, ten years ago called iTree, and you're able to measure the canopy of a town by using all older aerial photographs or older Google Maps against new. So that's one of the things we're hoping the working groups can undertake and get some real data to take a look. So we have no data now to make a claim like that? We have drone shots. We have, we have no, we have no um, coordinated data, correct? I'm sure that AI is available to do that. Well, AI looks at pictures. Artificial yes. intelligence looks at pictures and analyzes what's happening. Right, but I'm talking old-fashioned person. Yeah, right. click, click and point. Well, or even, I mean, I think it, before one says excessive cutting is happening, we've had it, you know, in the 1700s, every tree was cut in the 50s and 60s and the 1900s. We had a lot of cutting, and to make a statement like that is, I just think it needs to be backed up by data, especially when it's available by AI and so on. You can just look I, it up. I agree. We need to do that. But I think you also have to recall that the size of houses has gotten a lot bigger. And when you get a lot bigger footprint, you're <coughs> cutting down more trees accordingly. I also think you should remember that we've lost some town forest, both through the MWRA reservoir, which is just that we happen to be there, that's what happened there. And I think there are a lot of things that, 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 that uh, contribute to that. But you're exactly right. We do have to be able to back it up, and I have no problem with that. That's a good point. Any other thoughts? Moving along? OK. Balance us, you might have. Balance us. <laughs> Okay, so one of the things we have to consider as we try and manage and protect our trees is that there will be hazard trees that need to come down. Sometimes if they don't come down quick enough, I think this has happened out at Highland Meadows, we get power outages, we get, um, we get danger to the roadways. So we need a process where we can, you know, where at one point we say we do want to protect our trees, but when they do need to come out, we can take them out quickly. That lends to the considerations of safety, infrastructure, maintenance, how we keep them keep the trees that are living healthy and you know 
or appropriately trim the ones that are hazards and appropriately take out the ones that aren't. Um, we do have to consider private property rights, the rights of abutters as they play into our reviews and approvals. Um, you know, how much should one person be required to do for the benefit of their neighbor in screening their property? And then the level of review for each, for the level of tree removal. Is it, you know, is a single tree worth reviewing or is it a larger, you know, property-wide um, problem we should be taking a look at? And I'm not saying answers right now, but those are the considerations we'll take up in this group. So that's short, only four points. Any, any comments on this? Kristen, Tom, great. Okay, let's move to DPW. Okay. I'm going to take you through the uh, roadside um, vegetative management programs that we're building. Right. Um, ultimately, we will get to tree in the tree discussion. But uh, DPW is responsible for 87 miles of public roadways, of which it equates to essentially 200 million miles. This is not his slide. No, it's not his no, slide. Good. Tom's just taking us through. Um, 200 what? 200 linear lane miles. Linear. So lane both miles. sides of the road. Um, mowing and mowing schedules, that's where we actually mow shoulders, islands, etc. Uh, we have a flail mowing, which is a specialized piece of equipment where hand mowers basically can't, um, can't do the mowing. Um, we, have, we have a vegetative management plan, which highlights some of those as well as um, the yearly operational plan, which involves, yeah. in particular, um, spraying for, for nuisance weeds such as poison ivy along the sidewalks. Um, we get requests for vegetation removal by the town by residents when vegetation encroaches on the public way. The tree pruning. Uh, Eversource uh, does some tree pruning in town. They just recently did a fairly comp comprehensive tree pruning this last spring. Um, town tree pruning through our, our tree contractor. Uh, we've gone up and down Route 30. I'm concentrating on the main roads right now, but essentially removing dead wood from trees along the major roadways. Um, tree pruning by our crews. That's typically in support of our roadway reconstruction program. Uh, we'll, we'll go through and, and develop a, essentially a canopy on the roadway. Um, so when we go, go through and reconstruct, we're not actually taking down branches and everything else. Uh, tree removals. Um, the tree removals that we've done in town since I've been in town are, are typically dead or, or have been confirmed to be high hazard trees. Um, that's essentially it. All right. Pretty much more than that. <laughs> Um, inventory. So over the last three years, um, why don't we stop there? Does anybody have questions about the procedures he just talked about? Go ahead, Dan. Um, for the spraying for poison ivy, can you just describe what you're spraying? Um, the details associated with it are in the, the yearly operational plan. It's it's typically along sidewalks. It's it's directed spray. Um, the material and stuff is, is actually in the document itself. Yeah, no, okay. I don't have it off the top of my head. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Identify yourself. Oh, Dina Danforth, founder of TAG. <laughs> Long ago. All right. In the dark ages. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad uh, Roundup was used was uh, brought up or glyphosate. There's a lot of concern about the overuse of glyphosate to kill the poison ivy, um, and I know that that's, that's been under discussion by a lot of citizens, so it's something to just keep our eye open in these, as these new groups form. I hope that can be part of the discussion too. Right. Because um, it does affect the trees and the right. health of the soil. Right. As well as other critters. <laughs> um, Tom mentioned developing canopy, and that's sort of a, uh, question in my mind. What, how do you develop canopy? Canopy is developed by the trees themselves. Right. I'm not sure what, what that exactly means and I think it gets to the balancing act that, that Emi brought up. It's a delicate balance right. how much you cut back. Sure. And we all need more canopy because the world is getting so much warmer. So mm -hmm. um, I just, I'm, I'm confused about that. 
Right. You have to talk, talk back on that. It's essentially the, the horizontal offsets associated with the edge of the road as well as the vertical over the roadway. Mm -hmm. Any other comments or questions? You, so sir. back to uh, the tree inventory. So three years ago, we undertook a, um, and it was a three-year cycle associated with um, doing the inventory. Um, we've, we've gone through the entire time. Um, we were digesting the tree results. Tree inventory for the right-of-way trees. For the right-of-way trees, yeah, correct. Right. So no other municipal yeah. trees, just the ones along, along the road. Correct. Um, <coughs> we're digesting the results of the, the report relative to the number of trees, species of trees and the various um, the various aspects of whether right. the, the health of the trees, health of the trees yeah. and yeah. so forth. Um, right. So more to come on that, hopefully right. the working right. group right. and such we can work on that as well. Yeah, that's always a good first step when you're going through a management process is to get the data done. Yep. You got a layer of data and then you can decide what to do with it. So, yep. Yeah. Any any standout <coughs> thoughts on the data? I mean did anything stick out for you? Is it less healthy than I thought? Or? Um, I'll say that we had more removals recommended by the arborist that did the oh, I did assessment than yeah. the, the, I initially had thought. Right, yeah. Okay. Got it. Can you tell us what's exactly in the inventory? I think it has size, location, species, condition. What else is in the inventory? And it was done by who again? It was done by uh, Davy Resource Group okay, yeah. and, and their arborist. Yeah. <clears throat> I think we've actually used in the town mm -hmm. for other projects as well. Um, there's location, there's, there's, I have to <clears throat> move my glasses to actually see the spreadsheet. Uh, when it was inventoried, uh, various comments that the arborist made, uh, condition, <coughs> species, um, primary maintenance need, multi-stem, Risk rating, secondary, secondary, uh, secondary maintenance needs. Um, just to name a few of the categories. It's a pretty comprehensive database for. for right. Is there a graphic that goes with it as far as where they're located? So, for instance, if you had to take out a swath of trees that was 20, 30, 40 feet long, you know that sort of jumps up and you go, ah, planting time. We have created or, a tree layer up through the GIS database. Each tree has an identification number as well as uh, the species diameter, etc. Okay, so that can be used to craft new strategies for developing the canopy as needed. Yep. And it, you have other topics beyond the inventory, or is that? I think that was it. Probably. Okay, gotcha. Any other questions on the inventory for Tom? Yes, Nina. Um, well, Lori and I have, have taken a stab at um, this this year, or 2019, sure. at going over um, a few streets to identify trees that were on the inventory. See if we could, as amateurs, if we could figure it out. You're semi-pro, I think. <laughs> semi-pro, right. Lori, where are you? Back me up here. So it was a little tricky. We, you know, the two of us are not dummies at this, yeah. but we are not GIS experts either, right. so we tried, right? We did, um, and happened? it was puzzling because oh. we really could not find some of the trees that were on the inventory list. Oh, I see, I see. Could not find them. We tried pacing back and forth. We tried looking. We tried everything. So I see. Um, I think this showed us that there are questions, and we need we need the arborist who did the study at Davie to help us right. out. Maybe mark the trees better right, right. so that we actually can see what they're talking about. Right. Because how, how do we as citizens um, make use of the inventory yeah. if we can't That's cool. you know, if we can't understand it. Yeah, so. the, the data is public, Tom? Just uh, the majority right. of the data is public. Okay. Uh, right. There's some features of it that yeah, have have had a chance I know you just got a bunch of data. Have you yep. had a chance to <coughs> Validate it and map it onto the we're, GIS system. It's so on the GIS system. We're, okay. Again, we're digesting. It. Yeah, you're just digesting. It. Okay. And I, I think I would just like so to. So a add layer validation it. might be asked for. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, and, and to make sure that the format is user friendly. We were working from a spreadsheet, so we were not looking. Oh, yum, So yum, while yum. we were on site on the tree location and right. looking through, trying to determine which was the the tree uh, that had yeah. been um, marked as uh, risk or whatever. 
we were looking at a spreadsheet and not using an iPad. With, Perfect. Um, so I think that there's a, a user interface that could um, yeah. be more helpful. Yep. Not to turn this into a problem solving meeting, right. but can you establish a layer on Google Maps or is that hard to do with the data that they have? I don't know about Google Maps, but I'm working with Kevin Kamalowitz, our GIS coordinator, okay. to address at yeah. least some of the issues. Yeah, okay. I, I think a tutorial. So someone could talk, you'd have a solution for someone <laughs> driving along and saying, oh, that's the tree they're talking about? Yep. Okay. Because I think one of the points that Lauren just made that you were just looking for the dead trees, not for the, you know, fair or bad, it just the dead tree should be fairly obvious. Right. Right, and so we were, we, had, <coughs> we were having trouble identifying even right, that. Right, right, right. So my, just one specific point is my guess is there's probably some high hazard trees that you have to deal with immediately. There and are high hazard. For any work groups or working groups or anything like that, right? Yep. Yeah, okay. How many of those are there? Ish. I'm not going to go with them. Okay, gosh. <laughs> Someone can look it up on the data. But there's but certain data that's available, there's certain data that's available. Right, right, right. Okay. But the, we just went through with NSTAR to determine high has trees as far as they're concerned. Correct. These are separate or different in addition to? That's the question that I've asked Chris Gonzalez. Okay. Because I shared the database with him before Good, he right? actually came to you and, and you guys approved a certain list of trees to be removed. Um, to which I asked him, I said, I want the ID number for the tree so I can remove it from the database. Great. So we're actually working with him to try and oh, nail that down. So there's an actual ID number in all the trees now? Correct. Not on the tree itself. No, but I mean that but the tree is identified. Because, because when Chris was doing the form, he was identifying between two different poles. That's just their methodology. Okay. I actually, he, he actually, actually had this database and he had the shape yeah. file. So it's like uh -huh. having all the different stars. Coordinates oh. for having for the trees. Correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. So was Chris impressed with the inventory? What's Chris's opinion on the inventory? Um, this is Chris from Eversource. From Eversource. 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 I, I didn't really ask his opinion. Yeah, I think he would be impressed. That's my guess. <laughs> it's not always no. easy to match up, though. I tried it when we got the list. <laughs> no, yeah. It doesn't. It it's not always a one for right. one. Or you look at one that's like. I think. A 14 inch oak nearby, and you've got an 18 inch, and you wonder is that really the tree or not? But it's nice to know that Chris is engaged in this. He's a practical guy. He does it not just for our town, but all towns. Yep. And he's a bright guy and a collaborative kind of guy. So helping him, having him help us think through this, I think is, is wise. To let people know, this isn't so theoretical to people up here and Nina and other folks from TAG. We've actually driven around and pick up trucks with Eversource and reviewed trees and yep. Yep. Uh, actually held hearings for trees on the spot uh, near power lines. So it's interesting to expand that thinking and say not just scenic roads, but all roads. How practical would that be and sort of what effort would have to be well, done? it wasn't just driving around pick up trucks, it was walking the streets. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was. And looking at every tree. Yeah. Yeah. And I just want to congratulate ground. you guys for taking part in that because yes. that's the first time for me, since right. 2004 when we formed right. TAG, that the planning board has actually gotten out and walked the roads yeah, yeah. and looked at trees. That's wonderful. Yeah. That's off to you. Guys. Right, right. We're still <laughs> amateurs. <laughs> so we're not the semi-pro that you are. Okay. Yes, Sue. Uh, yeah, I'd say the Tiki Mai or a Tom. Um, obviously, we're not the first town in western Massachusetts, or eastern Massachusetts, rather, to do a tree in. I can't answer that question as far as which towns have, have I don't know done this. Yeah. Um, so we don't know many other towns in our metropolitan area. Lincoln, Wellesley, Concord. I don't believe Wellesley has. I don't know about the others. I mean, you can go, you can easily go and ask, but I. Maybe can probably tell us because they've done them. Again, my starting my starting point my starting point was I needed to know what our existing infrastructure was. Right, right. What were the needs of the existing infrastructure? Right. And then you can start to formulate solutions to address right. specific needs. Right. Right. So you're sort of coming at it from the point of view, sort of off the tag, and like a meeting looking like municipal infrastructure and you're sort of looking at what needs to be addressed and then you're sort of getting at it as what trees are creating a canopy and need to be saved. So this is going to be the melding. Mm -hmm. And I, and I think
think the planting aspects or replanting has right. to be part of that equation yeah. as well. Yeah. I just to modify that slightly so it was my dealings with Tom have uh, on this issue it doesn't seem to me like it's so yin and yang like tag likes trees and Tom doesn't I think Tom sees trees as an asset there's no question about it and he has to do yeah yeah and he, he, he understands there's infrastructure needs as well um, but in my opinion when I've talked to Tom he would like to see trees thrive just like Nina would and at times you know people are at odds but I think Tom has a deep appreciation for trees and that the fact that the community has a deep appreciation for trees is that fair to say Tom yep great and Tom has the group that did this inventory have they done any other inventories or is this the first time no 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 they've done others like again off the top of my head I I can't remember where they've done this I'm just wondering what the user interface you know if it's yeah. very Good. I, I sense we'll, an assignment for the working group. We'll work through those issues. Right. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. I think, are we done with Tom? Any other questions for Tom? And we'll move to the working groups. So we allocated an hour. I think we're right on time, halfway through it. So you might, you could pick up the slide presentation. Yeah. So now I'd like to turn this more into sort of a, a brainstorming discussion, given that the interest that is out there, I think it drew a lot of people in today. I'd like to participate in sort of a brainstorming session uh, for this working group. Uh, we're excited. I think all the key groups are excited to be a part of this and to be driving it. Uh, and here are some of my seed thoughts, and the working group can decide these sorts of things for themselves by all means. Um, and Tom had suggested this next point. Uh, maybe it came from somewhere else, but the first person I heard it from was Tom. And he said he would like to work with a group like this to establish guidelines for him to follow in managing trees on the right of way. So he's, he'd love to have the guidance. He'd love to have uh, community participation. And then we thought that through a next level, and we said, well, how can we make that practical? You just establish these guidelines uh, in a vacuum and then ins institutionalize them. It's like, no, you don't want to do quite that. You want to have a set of uh, guidelines, sort of beta guidelines, let's say, and then you want to have one or two pilots. So it was Tom's suggestion that we ch choose a stretch of road, maybe a stretch of scenic road. You know, I'll just say Concord and say, OK, let's implement these guidelines on Concord. And if we did that, what would happen? All right. So then factor that feedback in and say, let's pick another stretch of road and do the same thing. And maybe do it three times and say, hey, you know what? Now I think we have guidelines that can apply and have flexibility across all of Weston. Right? Um, so that's our suggestion for sort of the primary focus of the of this working group is to aim for those guidelines and whatever time practicality makes sense I would I would think six months would make sense um, and of course he's got to consider the impact of you know the infrastructure on trees and the trees that impact on the infrastructure and um, uh, I think the group should get together and establish their scope and their timelines to say we're going to try to do the following things along the following timelines so um, so I'll stop there I want it's not my working group so those are my seed ideas we got together and this is kind of what we started with and I'm really interested in hearing from others you know starting with the others in the quartet on you know other ideas or structures for the working group so I'll open it up do you mean by one to three pilots so what I, uh, that was the idea of taking a stretch of road and saying, okay, assuming those beta guidelines, what would happen on this stretch of road? Let's look at the trees that we're saying. Hey, we're trim. Exactly. Like a long stretch of road, or what, you know? It could be a section. It could be the whole seg the whole roadway. It could be segments. So I would say, again, this is something to think through more deeply. I think, but you know, for example, conquered from the center of town to the split with Marion, for example, it could be a stretch. And you say, if we had this set of guidelines, how many trees would be affected? Um, what would happen to the canopy, as you say? You know, what would happen to the trees? What would happen to the practicality of Tom trimming the trees? You know, is it realistic? Those sorts of things. What, what are the guidelines? Do we have a documented set of guidelines today? Mass General Law governs yeah, shade yeah. trees, the scenic road. Yeah. Yeah. Bylaw guidance guides certain things as well. 
So I think we're trying to west what he the guidelines that he just mentioned. I think we're trying to westernize them. The state <laughs> shade tree law. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Make it a little more specific. And you know, frankly, I think I, I think this working group will succeed. I think the guidelines will succeed, but we have to establish that it might not, you know. But <coughs> I can't imagine not trying. That's how I feel. But there's so much opinion and so much determination to try to do it. You know, this is something I, I think we should try and try hard and be dedicated to. Well, Tony, another example of yep. Christopher Houston to the select board. Sure. Um, another example that came up was you have the guidelines for horizontal and vertical yeah. sort of distances or, or measurements or whatever. Right. And, and you have to have those because you can't have trees like taking off fire truck mirrors and plow mirrors and all that. And frankly, what happens is it's not just bad for the truck, it's bad for the tree could hurt the tree more broadly. Right. One question is, are those numbers the right numbers, or could we bring them down? Do we need to bring them up? Do we need to, to modify them a little? I'm not saying we need to modify them, because I don't know, but one of the things to discuss is, what would some of this look like? Are they, are they different, right. different dimensions for different so, roads? Right, right, exactly. Right. exactly. Right. So, um, this is the practicality is what he deals yeah. with every day, and he's saying, hey, <clears> I want input. You know, I've got feedback, positive and negative, but I'd like to have to work together on guidelines. I mean, I think, I think from the select board perspective and I think from the DPW perspective, one hoped for objective of this is so that when someone sees trees being cut down, for instance, um, everyone's not all panicked and say, oh my god, the DPW is like taking hacksaws to a, a scalpel right. problem. And, and we can point to these guidelines and say, nope, it's all cool, it's all understood, we're not going to reinvent this wheel over and over. Right, exactly. And, and we can all just say, okay, well, you yeah. know. Have the guidelines on website, right? right. People download them, make them, make people aware of it, promote yeah. the idea, promote input. I mean, that working group, I would assume, would have public input along the way. And I think part of this also is the cutting and pruning, obviously, but it is a replacement. And you know, we have a lot of beautiful old trees, especially I'm, you know, I'm thinking right now, concrete stretch, gorgeous old sugar maples, and they're at their end of their their tenure. And how do we replace them? Where do we replace them? Is it in the right way? Do we push them back a little bit farther? whether that's conservation land or whether private people want to donate some of their property, you know, or have a, some kind of a tenant or a discussion about it. What size trees? Can we put plant shorter trees like Everstone's always wants us to where the, where the utility wires are? Big trees go on the other side. You know, when you do the drainage, you start cutting trees, um, roots, you know, how that works, um, how you deal with it. I mean, there's a whole bevy yep. of things, so I think it's going to be quite a bit to discuss. The other thing I'd like to know about this is, is there any discussion as far as dealing with some of the town forests? Because the right-of-way trees are the ones we always see, but the health of our forests is also important. I don't know where or how, but I think we should not leave that off the table. And we should discuss about how that could be brought into some discussion. I, just as far as public trees, I consider those trees to be public trees too. My, my immediate reaction, knowing what's on DPW's plate, yeah. yeah. partly at our request yeah. and the town's broader request, is it's not a bad idea, but it's it's priority. Priority. it is, right. a, it is right. a phase that we're right. but it could also, it could also, not this phase. It might be something where a private group of people could assist. That's all. I, I think it should just be considered. I don't know mm. how or where for, but maybe Com, the Com, list. Yeah, maybe Com, Com has some ideas, etc. Very good. Any other comments, thoughts? There are See also you? school trees and other forms of public trees that right, right. Have haven't really fallen into that category right. yet as being part of the right of way. They're not part of the right of way, but they may be the driveway to the middle school or you know, lots of lots of more more areas you're, to be. You're discussed. thirsty enough for answers on right of way that you'd like to have that be the first party and then these be. Next, is that what I'm hearing? That's what you hear. Okay, got it. Yes. I have a question. I'm not sure. Are school trees actually public trees? I'm, I'm, I'm going to guess yes. They're public trees under it's the just, control of the school. Yeah. Yeah. It's just they call them community right. trees. So the, yes. the schools decide? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So going once. Twice. Hey, can uh, Chris? Let's talk about membership. Is that fair? Yep. So, um, 
Tom, are you going to be on this working group, or are you going to appoint someone to be on the group? I will be involved. Okay, gotcha. So they'll be, I think it's important to have one person, at least, in yep. the quartet involved in almost every meeting. Is that fair? Yep. You can. And Chris, what's the plan? For uh, the this board? one, uh, Harvey's going to be our rep okay. to that. Oh, um, he'll be good. <coughs> yes. It's a public one. Okay. Yeah, that's great. And what about TAG? And I will be a part of it. Okay, so you'll be a part of this working group? Do you have like a sense of when we're meeting first? Or? Okay. Who establishes that? Yeah. Who's going to call the meeting? Is that the it's, I, I, just just to get it out there? This is not yeah. a formal committee, and it's yeah, not right. a formal. There aren't There's like no chairs notes, and right. votes and OML okay. yeah. right. stuff and all that. Not because we're trying to avoid transparency, but just because it's not necessary. And there will We've be plenty of opportunity for the working group. Yeah. So the, yeah. the working group, I so, think, Chris, would it be fair to say they're going to report back to? We can report here to you. You yeah. decide. Yeah. But maybe every couple months or that kind of rhythm. Or yeah. Okay. Got it. And and the report when the first meeting is called will be I assume my or someone will send yeah. out an email saying hey when are you all free? Okay. Okay. Fill it out. Yeah. Let's but take it's, it it's sooner rather than later. Uh, I mean, it doesn't have to be tomorrow. No, I, that's, I didn't, that's why I didn't yeah. say tomorrow. I didn't later say tonight, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just call hard and see if he's free. <laughs> yeah, but you guys need to figure out who you're. Uh, that was going to be yeah. my next. I was going to turn to my fellow members. And I think so. we need Sue here for that discussion. Okay. Too. We need Sue and Steve <laughs> to talk to us. Okay. So you want to wait till Steve is here as well yeah, and talk about it. Okay. So the, the train is, is the issue. Okay. Great. So I think we can either appoint one of us to man each one of these, or we can have some sort of rotating whenever you guys decide. Okay, let's and move then on. There's a four. Sure. You said there's a quartet. So I get Harvey, Laurie, yes. Planning Board, and who else? TBW. TBW. Oh, of course. That's oh. a quartet. Okay. Yeah. Someone, he said that. It's uh, Tom on drums, right? <laughs> <laughs> Tom on drums. <laughs> okay. Ready to move on? Okay, move our on. next working group. So this is private land tree. So the same thing, the quartet will line up, same sort of time frame, and maybe this has been done, so I apologize if all this thing has already been done. I'm repeating good work that's already happened, but again, just seeding with ideas. I know myself and my wife would love a handbook, you know, on making decisions about trees on our property, you know, if that's something that the working group wants to contemplate. And there's been great um, a great start to a tree bylaw study. I think we've looked into what other towns have done, We've thought about doing surveys of what our residents want, that sort of thing. So we should take all that momentum and stack it right into this group. So love to do that. And then the same sort of thing here. Agree on a, you know, shortly agree on a scope and timelines for for this group. So those are those are my. Are, are these groups going to be identical? Um, in their in who sits on the boards? Well, I think the they groups? should be two different groups. That's my sense. I think Tom is in need. Is desirous of uh, guidelines very, very, very soon, and the tree bylaw I think will maybe extend a little further and have a different mindset. That's my sense. So, so it would be a different person from. I think so. Uh, we'll talk about membership at the end, but I think it, 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 it just from a staffing standpoint, it could surely be two different people from the planning board, and then. It, yeah, I would just emphasize that. Tom slash Tom's designee, depending on the given day. Yes, exactly. It's going to be more of a, in the nature of a resource. Yes. Even more, I mean, there's a more direct involvement with the right of way stuff. Exactly. I don't think exactly. Tom wants to get into the business of deciding what can be cut down and what can't. Um, yeah, right. Get on people's private property, but he's certainly, your, his designee is certainly a resource. Yeah, sure. So it should be included, but. So you had a reason. We were considering that you wouldn't be on this working group, but then you had a good reason, and I forget it, why it would make sense. Can you repeat that? I forget that. Okay, there was a good reason. <laughs> we were thinking, does he want to be involved? Maybe just for the awareness of it than anything else, of why you would be involved in right. private trees. Maybe it's the added value. You now have an arborist on board, and sure. perhaps that person can add value. You can share right. them. Yeah. We also, I mean, some of the private tree things that you know, you get an issue where the private tree starts to encroach on the yes. right of way, so the, yes. the trunk might be on private property, but the <laughs> right. branch is hanging out, right. and we get, like, people mad because we're telling them right. we're going to cut the branch. Because one of those shared tree issues. Yeah. Yeah. Right. right. So it's it'll be helpful to have. Yes. Some deep, yes. And I can say, I mean, I uh, our person will be different. That'll be Lori. Okay. Lori will serve on this board. Okay. 
Yes, Terry, don't forget to identify yourself. Terry Eastman, 50 Pigeon Hill Road. Um, just a question. Um, does someone some, from conservation need to be included in these working groups because of wetlands and other kinds of considerations to conservation land? So I'll chime in on that. Reese Tellis, Comfort Road, and I'm on the Conservation Commission. Um, and so they asked me to sit in on this. And it, it, it seems like you guys had it pretty much under control. Um, you know, our uh, jurisdiction as it relates to wetlands is, is specific to certain distances and stuff. And you guys all know that. So you, if, this, if there are trees in our jurisdiction, you'll, you'll let us know. Right. Um, and I'm sure Michelle is going to be in contact with me myself. So a thought I have for you is if you guys could attend the first working group, sure. and then you can make the decision mm -hmm. to say, yeah, I'd like to continue. You surely wouldn't be shut out of them, right? Right. No question mm -hmm. about it. Right. And while I'm talking, I might as well uh, just keep going a little bit. One, uh, and what I'm going to say is a little counterintuitive, but um, we're patient to be able to hold on to that. <laughs> All right. So um, we're talking a lot about preserving trees here. And one of the challenges that, that we face in this town in New England is that we've got a lot of mature trees that are sort of even age. Um, and Leslie touched touch on this a little bit. Um, and especially the old pine trees are very vulnerable to wind. We've seen that in last windstorms. And when we get a real hurricane that comes through here, you know, we need to be prepared for, for the fact that a lot of them are going to come down. Um, so, so as the events get more severe. Yeah, or even, not even necessarily more severe. I think they will get more severe, but it's been a while since we had a good hurricane. And, and you know, Hurricane 38 came through, and, and that's kind of the, 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 the canopy that we have at this point. They right, yeah. sort of grew up from that. Right, right. So cutting down, you know, m mature trees that are unhealthy is, is a good thing. Um, right, right. Because you, you're, you know, reducing a hazard, and you're releasing an understory. You know, you cut down the tree, and the trees beneath it now have a, a you know it's more planned, some, planned growth is what you're talking yeah about. some planned growth or even more natural growth right so you know as, as important as it is to save the mature trees we have right. it's almost more important to save the understory and be right. planting trees and making sure that the next generation of trees is right. coming in in a healthy way right right you know that's a more difficult challenge that's one of the factors that we used when we talked about to cut or not to cut right the trees near uh, right uh, power line right. is what trees were filling in the difference. So, right. Here. Okay. So let us, you know, keep Michelle posted on, on yeah, okay. meetings are and we'll okay. figure that out. Fantastic. Terry, are you set? Yes. Yes, okay. thank you. Uh, I, I guess when you we're talking about private property, um, there's a lot of different aspects that affect the trees and what can happen. There's conservation, there's board of health with septic systems, there's the drainage from SWIPA. And, and then there's farming for the few farmers left. And I think that, um, that it would be good to have some sort of a private citizen, you know, it does affect property value, the way that these rules come out for, for this um, private lands part. And I think that it needs to be looked at very carefully because I don't think homeowners are trying to do the wrong thing by their trees, and I think they're very constrained a lot more so than, than towns that have sewer systems like Wellesley and Concord, and um, and we're different. We're more like Wayland and Carlisle, and I think we really need to be careful of that because um, you can put un, unnecessary restrictive uh, rules on property, and it will affect the value. Got it. Chris? I, I, I can tell you that's a priority of the select board, including, in this case, Lori, we talked about it. I gave the example of, <clears throat> I mean, it's nice to say that when we buy a house, we buy the neighborhood and all that stuff, but when my next door neighbor bought the house next to me, they didn't buy my trees, because I, or if they did, I didn't get the check yet. Um, the, and the point is we have to respect that um, it's great that he likes the, tr my, the trees on my side that scream when he has no screening, but it's another thing to tell me that because he likes it so much, I can't take mine down. Um, Thank you. If, if, if I'm going to be prevented, I should at least be paid for it, um, or at least that's one way of looking at it. Um, you could argue that the problem now is that I've already clear-cut before the neighbor finds out I'm going to do it, so maybe one thing you could do is have some procedure where there's at least an opportunity for the neighbor to right. try to convince me not to do it or, what, or, or buy that slice or whatever. Right. So it's not just a complete free-for-all, but we're... we're very concerned that it's it's not enough to just say trees are great now we should be able to take down the tree right so we, we need to be thoughtful I don't, about I don't think one of the things that's great about these working groups 
And the fact we're all together in this room right now is we can share thoughts, priorities, um, you know, and, and values. And I've, no one is, is going to tell anybody what to do, but I think there is some communal understanding and education which can happen. And I think that's a good thing for the town. That's how we've worked together in the past. I'm happy to see that it seems to be happening with the tree management. Yeah, when, the other thing I would add, sort of in the other direction, is um, one thing we've also learned through harsh experience is that um, you go cut all the trees on your right away. It shouldn't be advertising this, but you go and do it. And you know the penalty for that is a warning, don't do it again. Uh, if it's your first violation, well, that doesn't buy squat. So right, right. there, too, it may be one way of thing that needs to be revisited is if you do that sort of thing, you're not allowed to, mm -hmm. maybe there need to be more penalties. Yeah. Yes. Right. That's right. And, that's not, and, that, and that's not your tree, so you right. can't say right. that's my tree. Right. Right. And, and there, too, part of the education is, and I think this has come up with some of the people getting mad about when DPW has done stuff, people don't maybe need a little more education that they actually don't own all the property that they Right. Mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Yeah, so I think it's a wonderful conversation about to happen. <coughs> yeah. So one thing that made me feel comfortable proposing this kind of meeting was, number one, that other towns have done such a bye -bye, so <coughs> it's a crazy thought. And the other thing I think I heard from TAG, or someone representing TAG, that one of the things they wanted to do very soon was put out a survey to the town to ask you know, residents yes. what kind of things make sense to you. So it's not anything that's considered sort of in isolation by, you know, ivory tower kind of tree people. You know, this is something we're trying to be um, uh, very engaging, you know, and do what townspeople want. Any other thoughts on this working group? Yes. Um, one of the things that came up today in TAG, um, as as far as resource goes, when you um, you're talking about three three tree groups now, all yes. yeah. um, you know, working for the good of the town. Yeah. Um, but none of us, and none of the ones that you just said on these tree groups, is has really has arbor culture background, yes. Yes. arborist background, trained trained arborist, That's fair. Uh, or certified arborist. So that worries me a little bit because there's a lot of uh, management of trees is, is a profession. So yes. can we call on someone with um, uh, from time to time with these groups? And is that an option or a That's what? a great question. So you now have an arborist on board, the APW. Jackie you, Jackson. Jackie? Mm -hmm. Could Jackie participate in this at times at she least will. be called upon them? She will. Okay. And I, I'm guessing, I mean, we have arborists that we use that yeah. would right. be available at times. That the town yeah. uses, yeah. We'll have resources. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what we have consulting yeah. budgets for. Yeah. That's correct. I mean, they're making, since Davy Tree did the original inventory, they're very familiar with the town. Davy. They could probably check in and maybe we want them to take a look at things or make recommendations. Yeah. yeah. And I would drag Chris into some of these big arborists, right? So I think he'd provide a lot of practicality mm -hmm. as well. And Davy Tree oh, has <coughs> developed policies for other towns. So they're very familiar with because I talked to them when we were walking the streets and they were very familiar with other towns' policies as well. Uh, so they yeah. can bring a lot right. of knowledge yeah, to absolutely. the discussion. And as far as a booklet goes, um, I know Lexington has a fantastic uh, citizen's tree booklet. We, oh, cool. we don't have to reinvent the wheel. Right. Just we still do it. It's change the time. <laughs> yeah, right. 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 Go ahead. Yeah, that's right. great. <laughs> Put it on our website. That's great. Okay. Anything else? Uh, membership, you're saying, on the select board oh, okay. side? This will be Lori. Okay. And then you're going to be sort of part time on this, you're saying? We'll figure it out. Okay. You'll figure it out. Okay. Tag? And for tag, it'll be Barbara Fullerton. Okay. Great. Barbara. With me as a backup. Okay. And then we'll soon think through it. Maybe on the agenda yeah, we'll for the next good. planning board? Yeah, that sounds perfect. Good. Okay. So we can have our first meeting before the next planning board. Yes. Why, why can't, now that Steve's here, why can't you all discuss Oh, that's great. Uh, yeah. Okay. I mean, that's Steve's, Steve's here. Steve's here. Sue, so are you okay talking about membership now? Uh, sure. Okay. Okay, so let's start with the one we're on. So. Private? So, yeah. The private land tree. Is Dana holding the camera? Yeah. Don't raise that. We'll, 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 we'll switch to me, too. Right. <laughs> Oh my God. Right. So if anyone has a preference to be on one or the other, or if you guys like to rotate it, so. Well, I guess first question is who wants to be on either of them? I'm assuming 
Yeah, you're right. Sue, you're so, are you interested? I couldn't hear you. Could you please? We're, we're just figuring out who would be interested to be on either of the working groups. Alicia says yes. I said yes. How about you? Yes, that would be. I was just uh, specifically, um, have you decided which of the working groups are existing? No, this is just um, general. Would you care to be part of it? Just to see who is and isn't interested. And we don't have to do it. It's not signing up for the rest of our lives. We're only switching it out. So right. So I would, right. And Tony? Oh, I would prefer to leave it to the three of you. I assume you've got so, plenty on your plate. Yeah. See? Steve? No, thank you. Okay. <laughs> Please, no, thank you. So, so the three ladies. Yes. Sue, do you have a preference? No. Do you have a preference? I can go on. I actually think having a rotating might actually be helpful. Yeah, then we get some good cross. Yeah, I think so, too. So did you hear that? that? Did you hear that, Sue? She agrees with our rotation. Okay. You guys should figure something out so that... You have some view of some continuity? Yeah, I think I'm, I'm a little bit worried about continuity. Yeah. I'm, I'm worried about continuity, but then the three of you can't like meet up to chit chat. Well, no, no, we're not going to do all three of oh, us. Okay. We're just we're saying the three no. of us were interested, and then we'll. So why don't we pick the, at Sue least the primary it. person to start with so a meeting can happen? Okay. Sue can do it. Sue can do it. Sue? Do you want to be the primary person? The first well, which one? What is it? Don't know yet. I think it might be the scheduling issue might be an issue for her to start. So I'm going to suggest the two of you start, and then have her go as a backup going forward. Is that fair? Yeah, because just from an OML, like if Alicia's the person to this private one, yes, and she can't make it, she can talk to Sue about the private one all the live long day. Yeah, exactly. Two of them, and likewise, if Leslie's doing the other one, she can talk to Sue all the live long day. Right. The three of you can't talk among yourselves. Right. right. But I'm just a little report. concerned about being overextended. Oh, you're worried. Okay, that's about fair. personal overextension. At the that's fair. So, Sue, if you think you could do one, then you know I could be right. the backup. Okay. And I'll do the other one. Right. You so you decide. And I'll okay. be the backup. Okay, that that's sounds good. good. Like Sue, it. do you care? I don't care. Uh, Private, public. I, 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 I don't know yet. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll let you know. We'll Since you don't know, why don't we just say you're private? <laughs> Since you're right. so flexible, and Sue will be the public. But so Actually, let's do it the opposite because no, public wants to start first. Public wants to start, so why don't you do that? All right. And so, so, yes, as soon as this discussion is done. Okay. Right. Fantastic. And I'll just do some information. Okay. So I'll be the back. No problem. That's, that's okay. Fine. That's fine. And Link, uh, Eva, you're going to spot the meetings, right? I will. Okay. Fantastic. No. Any, <laughs> any closing remarks? We want to these folks on. Do a great job for our trees. Yay, good job, guys. Yay. 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 Good job, guys. Yay. Okay, does that close that matter? Thank you very much, Tom. Nice job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thanks, Greg. Appreciate it. Is that your Christmas tree? Sorry. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Yeah. We're doing well. Frankie is poor. She is. She's a tough one. Oh. Yeah. And she's poor. She wants to be everybody and she gets nasty now. Because of the party of the nightmare. Well, I don't know. Like, but we're also going to send them to Yeah, yeah. Send that to Michelle, too. Well, Michelle. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. that's, yeah. Uh, I think, yeah. under yeah. our jurisdiction. Yeah. 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 You don't see it soon, how? Yeah, yeah. Why don't we start warming up for the next agenda item? Yep. Okay. Yeah, are you the applicant, is that right? Yes. Except it would be nice if it was turned outside. You're in the courtroom rather than landscape right now. We're going to Jericho Lance. That's fine. Maybe it takes a while for you to get in here.
Do you have slides? Okay, great. Yeah, it's I I landscape probably too. best. Yeah. Or the other slides is best for him. The camera is. Okay, sure. Um, my name is Sheila. Okay, so this is a matter of uh, Jericho Lane's uh, condominiums site plan approval for replacing existing lighting and add lighting. Yes, uh, right? yeah. Okay. Thanks. My name is Sheila Cummings. I'm on the board of trustees at uh, the Jericho uh, the condo at uh, Stonegate at Weston. So I just want to lay out our plan, and we can you know take questions as we go. Or um, um, we have a lighting designer here with us. The electrician is not, uh, but I can get questions answered or whatever we need. So. The objective is to um, to provide some lighting uh, to replace what we had there before, which were gas lanterns. They've all been removed, they've all been capped, and now we want to add some LED lanterns um, in the same aesthetic that we have in this New England kind of villagey kind of uh, aesthetic we have going on. Um, two reasons for the for the lights: physical safety, so people aren't falling down when they're walking their dogs, but also to um, illuminate darker areas like the garages where we've had some car break-ins in the past and the police have said it doesn't really help you that you've got these dark um, garages where people can kind of hide. Um, we anticipate the work starting in March, okay? Um, so we've got a, our, our dental electric will be our, our um, electrical contractor. Um, we have, well there will be excavation all around the property to lay the, the conduit and the wiring. That will require an 18, uh, a two foot um, um, excavation area, and then they'll put sand down and then lay the conduit and the, and the wiring with that. We'll consult with Western Conservation. Someone actually emailed me from Conservation. Deb? Deb, how? Yep, she, she emailed me and she said she would help us with uh, getting that organized. Well, first, okay. um, Wolfers Lighting is helping us with the selection of the lights. Um, there are four things that we're basically going to do. One is replace the gas lanterns with LED similar kind of structures of these lanterns on six-foot granite posts scattered around the uh, complex. I have a map and I'll give you details of that. Um, we want to put two of these lanterns at the entryway because this is a particular area of concern and safety that we have. We'll have fence down lighting in two areas. Um, and then floodlights inside of the garages facing the back of the garages to illuminate that dark area. And then one area where we're going to have what's called moonlighting, which is like down lights in, in these trees, okay? So this is our map of the, of the condo. Okay, this is Concord Road over here. And this is where we drive on Jericho Road. And this is a particularly dark area. It's also the bus stop for the kids getting off in the evenings. Um, and so we wanted to put two of the lanterns on existing posts that are there. And I'll, I have a picture of that for you too. But we'll start with these coach lanterns and give you some detail as to this. Um, all of these little red dots on the map are the locations where we will have the six foot posts with the coach lantern on top. Okay, and it'll look similar to this. Um, so these will be the coach lanterns. They won't have any lenses in them. In this, on this diagram, they've got these acrylic kind of um, um, lenses, but that, will, that won't be there. There'll be no lenses because that's not dark sky compliant. The lights are dark side sky compliant if they don't have those kind of clouded lenses in them. Um, and then I've put the lumens for the total illumination of the, of the uh, um, the average foot candle, which we'll show you the photometrics, is an average of 0.42 foot candles. This is the entry at Jericho Road, coming off of Concord Road right here. And we have these two um, granite posts right here, these big granite posts. And we want to put uh, lanterns on top of those, because like I said, this is an area of particularly, particularly particular concern with the school bus kids getting off in the dark. Um, this is the photometrics. I think you may have received this, and this was meant to be an interactive kind of thing where you can blow it up um, and see what the foot candles are at each one of these. But this is the, our photometrics map of, of the complex. I'm going to highlight this one area just to blow it up so you can see what the foot candles are in detail. 
and this is that one area. So each, you know, it, it, it's much, the light is strongest, obviously, in that area, and then it pans out as you get further away, so that there's darkness in between each of these where there is no, where there is no ring. It's, it's going to be dark, but we feel like that's enough light to keep it safe. Can you read for us the foot candles in the, in the red yeah. circle and then the blue circle and then in the dark layer? I can't actually, it's so blown up. <laughs> but it's 11.2 right at the red, right inside it's 11.2. So um, this is like 11.2 right there yeah. and right there. 7.2, then it goes pretty quickly out. The next numbers out are like 2.0 and 3.2. Um, then at the green circle it's 0 0.8, um, 0 0.7. Okay. And then out in the um, Kind of between that blue and purple ring, it's going to point two and point one. Okay. Yeah, and when there's nothing, there's nothing. And this is as proposed. Again. Yes, that's right. Yep, yep. Um, and that's proposed. I think the the lumens for each light was uh, was about about three thousand, uh, and it's a three thousand Kelvin to have like a warm warm light color. Um, and then in the garages, we have several garages. These are marked, indicated by the G's over here. And the number next to it indicates how many floodlights we're going to have. Some of the garages are much larger, have more bays than others. Um, and so this is just an image of the carports that we have. And what we're proposing is that on the inside, above the header, there will be a double-headed floodlight to, to, to illuminate the garages. Um, and again, this is another area of concern because this is a picture at night and it's just super dark in there when people come home and then they shut their car off and then it's really dark to walk out of there and, and like I said the safety concerns with the police had mentioned. So this of course will be um, the double headed light, this is what we're proposing, but it will also be on motion sensors because we don't want them on all the time in the evening, we just want them on when we need them. I've listed, again this will be a 300 Kelvin warmer color light, Each this in total is 3000 lumens. And then I've proposed that there'll be 20 of these throughout all the garages, um, so that'll be 60,000 lumens. So that's one per garage? Uh, no. Two um, garage. It depends. Depends on the size of the garage. Right, so. Right. But I'm trying to figure out the number per bay. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's so, in, oh, I don't know, per bay exactly, well, I'm but. I'm just wondering, are you, are you saying that one light takes care of two bays? Um, my proposal three? is that in, say, a smaller garage, we have two floodlights, so four heads. Okay. And in the larger ones, like there's a big one over here, we'll have three, so it'll be six heads. Okay. But I've just. How many cars? That's a big one. One, two, three, four. Five, how many lights six. per car? How about that? Six it's usually, days. we'll just have uh, two. Like there'll be one here, there'll be one here. Okay. You know, so two cars kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, then we're going to do this one area over here we have kind of a tricky situation because we felt like if we put a six post lantern, six foot post with a lantern on top, it would be like shining in their windows here yeah. and over here um, because we're going to put these over here but they're a, a bit of, this is not to scale just so we know, but this, um, this moonlighting was suggested by the um, electrician um, and it kind of illuminates, the, it's like down lighting in the trees. We're proposing that we use three of these lights, and they just call it on the, on the spec sheet here, the cut sheet, it indicates it's a warm color, just to illuminate this area because this is where people are walking from their cars to their homes, but there's no, there's no light there. So in total, that'll be another 510 lumens. And we think it would really be aesthetically pleasing as well. And if it works here, it might be useful some other place on the property that becomes too dark, too. Um, finally, we have this fence down lighting in two areas. This is more of a landscape thing. Um, and this area has no lights except for the, the front lights on the doorway. So just to indicate, you know, here's the end of the parking lot. Like, don't drive past here. And then along here is a long stretch of fence and we have no room to put lights because there's all trees over there so we can't put lanterns it's like covered by these trees so this is just a, an image i grabbed off the internet of what i'm talking about here the down light would be on the individual down posts here so not everyone every other one um, and this is just like taking around the turn there and then we would put it on every other post just as a down light to guide people and to help when they're walking with their dogs this is the specific light, and here's the, the specs there for that, which I just I had on the other slide, too. 
So, um, when I had spoken to Ima Aimai a while ago, there we're in this gray zone. Of course, we're not in you know we're not a commercial property. We're not a single family home, so we don't really qualify for either of these. Um, so those are kind of the regulations. But this is my spreadsheet of the color, the lumens, the total number of fixtures, and then our total lumens is over here. And as I said, the foot candles is an average of 0.42, um, which is well below what the one foot candle is for a commercial uh, property. And then our total, of course, if you multiplied our, I think the regulation is 22,000, so if you multiply that by 99, we're way, way under that, too. So. Yeah, the before and after number overall is great. Um, we didn't have the gas lantern foot candles, except that I can tell you that um, it was hardly any light was thrown. This is where we are, why we are, where we are. Um, they were prohibitively expensive to maintain and, you know, you know, keep up with the little mantles we were changing every three weeks and things like that. But they were also not fit for purpose, which was to help people with walking their dogs, and it was still pitch dark out there. So, um, well, I went to the sidewalk. And oh, yeah. I, we walked the property and I could see that it would be a problem. I mean, you've got people walking to their cars, trying to walk their dogs, and it's very dark. I went by later. And yeah, night. and that's what I had yeah. said. Come by. I did go by at, at night. At night is very helpful it's, to no, see I, where I, our concerns are. I think are. You, I understand that you need lights. Okay, <laughs> great. And it looked like you did a nice job in trying, you know, respectfully Choosing lights mm -hmm. that would be fit within your community, and I think that yeah, we that. as we like to say, we're more Western than Western. <laughs> yeah. How's that? We're very colonial. Have you been to our complex? Sure, I love it. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. It's very, you know, it's a, it was designed. Who hasn't lived there? Right? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Any any questions? Yeah. Um, Rebecca Gardner, sixty more in place. And yeah. Butters. So, it, ask your questions, but she has a few questions yeah. before level first. Yeah. Okay, ahead. sure. Um, so, as an abutter, I'm just curious about some of the lights um, as it uh, leaves and comes into the neighborhood. Um, are any of these lights potentially off, like the um, tree canopy lights, off at like midnight or one a.m.? Right, that's a good that's point. Yeah, um, I don't, I don't. Th I think we would have our lights on when dark, off in the morning. But I, the, the moonlighting is that what you're. Um, in the tree, and then yeah, that's those, very. But if you look at where those are. Yeah, the it's very. Field, unless you are up in the air, you're not going to see them unless you're in the complex. Yeah. So if this really is surrounded by this is Concord Road here, yeah. and so you'd make a left into Jericho. No, I know exactly. I mean, I'm, I'm in a butter. So um, okay. Yeah. So What's your point we, where you are? So through. We're we're over here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the warm place basically. Right. I know where that is. Sure. End. Yeah. Yeah. So we can see all like I can see all the lights of those people. Okay. Um, especially in the winter. Okay. Um, so I'm just curious, you know, how bright this is going to be. Um, so um, I I I mean I I it's no brighter than any other you know lights that are in the neighborhoods or whatever. In fact, we've tried to tone these down so that it's not market basket parking lot you know what I mean I mean we really want it to be charming more than you know uh, bright white kind of lights um, yeah I know where you are you are behind this sh the shed I think no over actually here, we're the over this we're the yellow house okay, okay. yeah Oh, oh yeah, no, that's right. no, our, that's our neighbor. Oh that's okay, right. okay, yeah, yeah you're right over we're here, 16. right? Yeah. yeah, I mean these lights are on on the other side of our road, right? Too. Right. So I think I really don't think it would be a you know a problem. This one will be in front of this building, so I don't think that would be offensive, um, obtrusive, really. Okay, yeah. thank Can I you. Sort of back up a little bit. Sure. Emily, how was this whole project originally? Um, Permit. I mean, is it a flexible subdivision? I mean, no, it was a, a multifamily back in the 70s. This okay. does this does not have. This is the first site plan approval they're coming. Done. Yeah, okay. for this right. property. That, that's, yeah, that's very helpful to know. Um, I got a couple of questions if I can. Sure. Um, I'm really disturbed to find out that we're having break-ins. Quite honestly, I'm well, we don't. I wouldn't say break-ins. In the time that I have lived here, I would say two years ago. We had multiple cars broken into. It was one night. It mm -hmm. was like they canvassed our place yeah. and went into any car that was unlocked. Broke a couple of windows, right, Yee? 
Yeah, in the, in the garages, I think because they felt protected and there was so dark. So when the police said that, we really felt like, you know, this is enabling problems, really. Yeah, I, I can understand that. Um, let's see. The floodlights in the um, carport. Yeah. I might suggest, and your electrician can help you with this, but instead of having, and I like the idea that they're facing forward into there, so that's good, so they're not blinding you. Right, you right. But when you close the door and you go out, you're going to be blinded by it. Okay. You might consider having those shine up and light the top of the that, that gable that'll give you okay. the light you're looking for. Right. And people will be blinded by it. But right. just, just a thought. Okay. They can't okay. shine up. Well, if they're inside there, you can see the trusses. It's open. Oh, that it was still open. Yeah, it's open under there. Yeah, it's open. Yeah, open. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. So they're, 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 they're going to be they're inside. They're right. It's a dark um, sky compliant right. garage. Um, <laughs> I'm just trying not to blind <laughs> people as they drop, as they come out, drop okay. the keys. Okay. Yeah. We'll get to We'll get to you. Well, no, I just a. Uh, Peter Kigwell, Porter on Jericho Road. Uh, many of the owners have uh, plywood above their cars so that Storage. birds oh, do not uh, poop on their cars. So the shining of the lights right, up is work. not always okay. uh, possible. Said, that was just a comment. Yeah. I think it's good that you're shining the way to help with dark sky compliance. Yeah. I was just trying to add a little bit. So yeah, I just didn't want us to put them in and not have them point out that you guys. So good. Um, the moonlighting in the trees, I have to wave a flag over that one. Okay. Um, the trees in the, in the run over um, parking lot for the field school had that done. Okay. And it's been nothing but a disaster. It's killing all the trees. It's strangling oh, them. Yes, because in order to cinch, if I'm understanding the way you're doing it, they tie it on with um, with um, straps, like cinch straps. How, how do they get tied into, no. the, into the trees? That's as I understand how they do them. I've seen yeah. other projects I've seen. And that, that just kill, basically gurgles the trees and kills them. As a matter of fact, there are people about to say, we want to take that out and do a um, different type of um, lighting. So whether you do bollards instead, or you have, you have another post light under the tree that's shorter and lights down, I think you really do need to come up with something better. You'll be happier in the end. Because okay. you're going to kill the tree otherwise. Oh. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, we've all yeah. learned by these mistakes. Mm. Um, let's see. The entry at the bus stop. Um, is there some way you can do that as not quite so... Um, um, harsh. Yeah, harsh and Statue of Liberty. I mean, can we do some of the lower lights like you had before? Like maybe a couple of low lights on the, on the post to let that area? I obviously want to keep the kids safe, but something that's that's a little bit more prescribed rather than quite so um, street pole like um, also, just a well we did we did try to look at some options whoops look at options there um, and I don't know Alicia if you had when you had driven down Concord Road did you see that spot was I it did see that spot I truly think no. that was not a lighting issue I okay well, what we're, we're thinking is, is no, but what we're thinking is if we have the lanterns on top of this, it will clearly mark, turn here, this is where the entry is. I was just thinking, you yeah. might consider a sconce off of it, because I've seen that done nicely too, where it's, a, it's, a, it's like an arched um, um, entrance sort of um, uh, uh, holder, you know, it's like a, like a hanging arm. Oh yeah, yeah. We could we could do something, something like that. That might be a little bit kinder and gentler, as far as the light. You still get the light, but it's not quite so upright. Okay. Yeah, because we had considered putting it on the side yeah. so that it's more towards the you know with something more like, like that, that yeah. rather than on top. Is right. that what you mean? Yeah, yeah we exactly. could definitely. So we were considering one. that anyway. It would fill the same coach lantern, but yeah. it would be attached in a slightly different way. And that way, yeah. it's just smaller. Yeah. 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 yeah, that would be fine. Yeah, okay. that would be great. And that would still provide that would you with the pretty. definition that you want. Let's yes. say this is our driveway. Yeah. Great, yeah. great. Yes, good and, suggestion. And that goes also back to right now, there are lights on the, by the side, by the entrances of all the buildings, which are, um, some of them seem like somebody's put in some very bright, uh, lights and some of the old or the older softer lights. So what so we did, we did, lighting. we yeah. did. Um, so that's an interesting point that you bring up because um, everybody did have different light bulbs in those, yeah. and so we came through with these photo sensor bulbs so that people are supposed to. They were all replaced, and people are supposed to leave them on so they go on when it's dark and they go off when it's light to help with our illumination of the whole place. However. 
Compliance is a difficult thing sometimes with 99 different owners, and so people have replaced them. But as you're saying, like my across the way neighbor is got a different light bulb now. The one when you first drive in, that first unit has a very, very bright one. Okay. And there's some softer ones, and you get another really, really bright one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think um, that all needs to be figured into the little Okay, code, so. sure. Yeah, I have not figured that in. Right. And as because it was, this is what I'm changing. That has been, and that has not changed. Those are just kind of the way it's been. And when you for say that, years. what are you talking about? Where are those those lanterns are on the side of everyone's front door. That's okay. up in there. So this is not all the exterior lighting by any means. It's most what you're proposing. Pretty much, pretty much other than those, other than the light at the front entry fence. And there's a light at the garbage um, shed, um, and those people's, you know, everyone has a, a light outside their front door. So is that 99 lights, or is it? 50 no, it's lights? fewer because there are units that are four units, 73, give or take. And, and what's the lumens on those lights? They're just light bulbs. They're light bulbs, regular. Well, do you know what wattage light, light bulbs they are? They were seven watt, sixty or they're seven watt LEDs. Uh, so the equivalent of a sixty watt, three thousand uh, Kelvin. So they're about eight hundred lumens yeah. each. And they're on photo sensors, so they're on and off um, at night. But you are right. There's a couple of fluorescents that have been replaced that we want to <laughs> change back. Yeah. Um, I've got two more things, or do you want to? Sure. No, go ahead. Okay. Finish. Um, I understand how you cut between commercial and residential. An interesting exercise to do, because I think you're below it, but just to check, is that the way your units are set up, they're basically the size of some of our houses. If you take some of the two and three unit house areas, like, I'm not sure where they are square footage, five or six thousand square feet. Each, for instance, if you go back to the plan that has all the units. Oh, yeah. That one. I mean, the, you mean each one of these units? Each one of those units? buildings basically counts as a house. And you went and you did the lumen count that way. You'd be interested to see what you get to end up with. Because mm. I don't know. I think so. Some of those units are the size of some. Of, well, my mother was in the one to the left. I can tell you. But <laughs> so I know that that was a three-unit uh, so, uh, building, and that was probably a um, size. I don't know. I have no idea. Five thousand square feet. So if you took look at yeah, the we wall, could look at the square just take footage a look and of each and just add total them up. Sure. I wonder if I square easy. footage and say however many different bills you have and say that's how many houses you have and see what you end up with. Yeah, I, think, I mean, that's a good okay. check. Yeah. Um, and there was one more, okay. but my brain has finally given up. Lights out. Lights out. <laughs> uh, Sue, I know you're chomping at the bit, I guess. <laughs> Not really chomping at the bit. Um, this to me is, um, I, I know Carly, it's a very dark, dark, underlit place, and uh, it sort of is appropriate on the road. And this is going to be such a dramatic change. And what oh. are telling me that the lights stay on? They're, they're photo, you know, sensitive so that they come on at night and stay on till daybreak. Uh, that's a lot of illumination coming from this one source. Also, I um, completely concur with Leslie when she says, no, up lady, not only does it strangle the trees the way they arrange things, it's worse than that, actually. It's, it completely disrupts the sleep cycle and the life cycle of all the mammals, the birds, insects, everything around it. I mean, the point is you want to make a time when there is darkness out there. I'm not exactly sure why the lights need to remain on, on after midnight. I mean, even in the city of Cambridge, they drop the lumen counts now after 10 and again at midnight. Yeah, I suppose we could we could change the the uh, timers on them so that they go off at a certain time. Um, really, maybe a bunch of them go off and leave yeah, a few, yeah, like yeah, every other yeah, or something. Yeah, like okay. You know, yeah. yeah. Okay. No, that makes sense. That makes sense. I mean, yeah. Save your money. Yeah. Just because this is going to be such a <laughs> dramatic change out of this little area in yeah. the woods, really. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Sure. So you oh, you can talk to us. My electrician how that works. Trying to come to a decision. Do you want to be specific on that now, or do you want to think? No, about I don't. I have board members that I okay, would like to it. consult so with. Right. To yes. Right. Okay. Yes. Got it. Anything else, Sue? Um. Yeah. The spotlights in the garage. And so let me be clear on this. They're not external no. they are aimed into the garage yes. so the motion detector de turns on when the car is in there allowing the occupants to get out of their car and go on to their home correct correct 
Okay, and there are no garage doors, correct? Correct, they're car All right, and yes. so, so those are all on motion detectors, and they will just go off? Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, so that's great, that, and they're all aimed inside yes. interior, not on the outside. And I think uh, Leslie talked about, I thought she gave a great suggestion about the school lamp place and having it down lower and less of a Statue of Liberty <laughs> item. So, um, yeah, those are my concerns. It's just like this is going to be a dramatic increase in the, the lumens, and this really is a place right next to the gardens. Aren't they public gardens over there? Um, um, further down. Yeah, that's up there. That's up near Merriam. Yeah, okay. So this is the one right on opposite. Are you thinking of Merriam Village, right? Yeah, no. It's, it's by the rail trail. Yeah. It abuts the rail trail. Right, right. That's okay. Right. okay. Oh, you know what did it? I did. I'm just looking. I'm looking only and thinking of it as being Jericho, but it's yeah. actually Stonegate. Yes, yes. Right. So that's still a big change, and that's right in the woods. Mm -hmm. Steve. So. I think we need to step back a minute and, I mean, in isolation this all makes sense, but when you think about what our requirements are for single family residences, of which this is a conglomeration of, um, I'm, I'm not so sure. I mean, uh, first of all, the floodlights we wouldn't allow, but I understand in this case they're going to be under the roof, so I think that's okay. Um, I think 3,300 lumens per fixture is really high compared to anything that we would allow in a house. Okay. 3,300 lumens is about 200 watts, um, you know, for a traditional incandescent lamp. So, and compared to what you have now, which, did you say you have gas? Yes. yes. Well, they're gone. Oh, they're, they're they're been eliminated. Uh, I mean, compared to what you have now, it's literally like night and day. Yes. And, and I, I think that, um, I think it's going to be really bright. I think that when you then add another 60,000 lumens, doing a quick calculation of 800 lumens times 75, it's it's a lot of light. And I'm wondering if they really need to be 3,300 lumens or if they could be, I mean, even 1,600 lumens is a 100 watt bulb. Yeah, I uh, guess. You know, maybe they could be 2,000 lumens, but it just seems really bright to me. And the other thing is, 3,000 K is, is is warm, but it's not as warm as um, an incandescent, which would be like 2,700 K, right. which is widely available in LED. Right. So this was, a, we had this discussion with our lighting designer, mm -hmm. and so there's a trade-off. If we go to 2,700, the, the light itself is more yellow, mm -hmm. and now we have less distance that it goes, and more more dark in between here. Even we had originally planned 10 foot poles so that it would have the largest row. But it looked, we thought the granite was more in keeping with what we wanted and the six foot, but this then, you know, shrinks this little, you know, ring of light so that we do have a number of areas where there is darkness in between, which is okay, you know. I mean, that's I mean, the least objectionable, but I just want you to be aware that it's not the soft glowing when you think of how traditional um, stone gate is and colonial and all that. Yeah. It's not going to have that feel. Yeah, we did. Um, the board had met with the elect the lighting designer and we looked, they had a Kelvin like scale light. Right. Mm -hmm. So we could see what this looked like mm -hmm. versus that. And of course, like Market Basket's gets 5,000, yeah. you know, right. Fenway Park, whatever. We want nice, charming light, but we didn't want to have originally, there were going to be 60 of these. If we had a very low light, there'd be 60 lights. And we don't want it to be, you, know, you, you drive into Stonegate and all you see is lanterns everywhere. We want them, you know, kind of sparsely around the property, but illuminating enough that we feel safe. I, I, so there is I a balance. Get it. Yeah. It's just that if these were single family homes, you wouldn't just have one or two exterior lights. You'd have, you know, you'd have some on the house itself, some in the entrance, yeah. you know, close to here and there. Yeah. So you wouldn't have these bright, 3,300 lumen fixtures. Yeah, I think little... making the analogy with a single family home, I'm not sure is exactly right because we're not just doing a driveway, we have a road and right. sidewalk. So also, you know, so it's, it's also... a little in between of a, it's not yeah. really, you know, just illuminating your garage and your driveway. This is a road, sidewalk. I understand. You know, yeah, yeah they're, they're, they are street lighting. 
Yeah, right, well exactly, as, exactly. Uh, yeah. One thing I, I would just, okay. if I could finish, Sorry. please. Um, if you could just ask your lighting consultant sure. to um, consider a lower lumen bulb if, if um, he or she thinks that that could work. Okay. Um, because I, I, I totally understand what you're saying, that it's, it is street lighting, but I, it would be really nice if when you're not living there and you're looking in, it looks like another residence. It okay. doesn't look like this. Um, you know, big multifamily thing with bright lights. Right, right. Got it. Exactly. Okay. So, uh, hey, Steve. Yeah. yeah. Along that same thing, that wonderful lecture I went to on lighting, they pointed out uh, that uh, that when you have a very bright light, that it, your eyes, you know, the pupil contracts in right. order to protect your eye, right. the retina. Right, right. And then when you move from that very bright spot, you're momentarily blinded. That they found. This is an expert in lighting and in dark sky compliance, and they found that having lower lumens, your eye didn't, your, your, the pupil stayed dilated, and it was less like you would fall off, off of a cliff because you left this super bright area right. and went into a dark area. So that if people do acclimate to the uh, dark, and not dark dark, but they acclimate to a lower light yeah. level. So but, I agree with you, Steve, it's a lot of lumens in there. It, there is a technical term for that. I don't remember what it is, but instead of having, I mean, there is, I understand not wanting to have 60 um, fixtures, but there is something about more uniform lighting, as Sue was talking about, rather than having bright, you know, dark, bright, dark, bright, et cetera. So, again, I think it's just something to ask your lighting designer. Okay, sure. So I have a thought for you. Yeah. Is there an ability to pilot the lighting? Can you take a section and say, I'm going to bring yeah. Well, light so, so here's our problem. The, there's no electricity in this complex. So we have to install three new electrical sources or services, I guess they call them. And this requires um, excavation. Uh, no, I'm just this. talking about very portable lights. I'm just saying. Oh, portable. Bring oh. in portable lights. Take a section of it. Quarter yeah. Room. Okay. Well, I can stack check up and see Steve's if that's suggestion. Something. Say, hey, what does that look like? Yeah. Stack in your proposal and yeah. have your residents walk the area and say, which yeah, if there's something for? like that. Rather that than might being be... so theoretical. Yeah. No, that's but absolutely that's right. Sidewalk. You don't want to. You could have a champagne party around. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. You just don't want to be surprised after spending all that money and not like Exactly. No, that's of You're course that's true. You're putting so much true. effort into it. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing I would suggest, and maybe you've done this, is to go over to Highland. Meadows and to Marion Village and see what kind of lighting I they have, have I have the frequency. And yeah. We have a, a foot candle meter so you can see what kind of foot candles they have in different places. Your electrician should be able to do that. Yeah. No, I have candle. been to those. I've been to yeah. a lot of condos around here right. to see what their lighting was like and the lamp posts and everything, just right. to see what the options were out there. Some of them were nicer than others, um, but this this is a little unique, I think. It's uh, not did you, were you able to take, or your electrician able to take foot candle readings to see what the lights are? Oh, no, I, I did not do That's that. That's something. Do we have one of that in the town? No, we don't have one. Okay, well, um, you might check with your electrician or your lighting designer, because they probably have one. Would you have for that on your phone? Okay, that's easy. Yeah, the phone is on your phone. Yeah, we've used the sound um, But it would be very interesting to say, oh, this is so many foot candles. Okay, sure. And that really tells you how that works or doesn't work. Okay, no, that's a great suggestion. Yeah. So we exhausted our feedback at the yes. board? Okay, yes. great. <laughs> From, uh, Sue, are you all set? Sorry, hands. I am. Okay, great. Hands. I think I saw hands. Up, actually. Not just hands. You made the same points I was going to. I was going to suggest bringing in lights and checking it out. Oh, so sure. I had it yeah. yeah, you texted okay. me that, really so I went ahead and said it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I have a question about like what what do I do next? I mean, how does this process work? If I you know address your concerns, uh, I think we ought to keep my suggestion is we keep the hearing open and have you back. And okay. I think some issues came up. Yeah. With some suggestions. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk? Do you want to delineate those now? Or? No, that's right. I've got I've got okay. my notes and I can okay. give you the answers on the things Fantastic. that we've discussed and yeah. So uh, what if kind you of put together some sort of beta test, I'd be willing to stop by and participate. Okay. If <laughs> maybe okay. too. So yeah. we had another question. Yeah, just just from a kind of a protocol um, standpoint, if we were to look at this complex similarly to Highland Meadows, as you've said, 
maybe that will give them the criteria for the lighting because you know, here's today, what about 20 years from now? And maybe it would be helpful to know. What, yes, what I think that would be very helpful. Very yeah. helpful to have some model yeah. for them. Because they have yeah, I know. Some, some consistency would be great, yeah. So what's been done there so far? Have, they, have you taken a look at Highland? Or have, have you compared them? I haven't compared them to Highland, no. Okay. I can. So that's some feedback you can offer to you. Yeah. Great. So we have two meetings next month, I don't know. How much time? So, yeah, that's what I would ask. Want. How does ask how much time? Because obviously you've got a board cycle to go through and consultants to work with. Um, wait, sorry. When are your meetings next month? The fifth and the twenty-sixth. Okay, maybe the twenty-sixth. My other board members yeah. say twenty-sixth. Give you time. The twenty-sixth is going to get a little stacked. Then I mean, I think that's. Well, hopefully, different. it won't be a long discussion. They'll tell us what they've discovered and okay. reacted to our feedback. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. We'll see the light. <laughs> <laughs> okay, with that. Well played, sir. Thank you. There you go. Nice, thank you. Nice job. Thank you. Okay. 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 Moving on. You have to understand how dark it is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 15 evergreen. I would buy it. Well, uh, 13. Oh, yeah. 15 evergreen. The day Sorry. 15 evergreen. We're dark, but I can see where you're walking to your car and the light comes on. Yeah, I can see that. You get it on you. This is Dana. This is Dana. You can show up to the board and I can pull out the song. Okay. We can get done in 15 or 20, maybe? Well, so yes, you can take it. Yeah. Okay, continue yeah. hearing. Yeah. Uh, Mark K. Hill, I was here uh, a couple weeks ago, about 15 Evergreen, and we've done a full site plan review for the additions to Jordan Meds and the homeowner. Um, for this section of the house, we've done the lighting, we've done the landscape, and all the main yards. Um, as the property was under construction, Jordan decided to relocate the gym from the basement into the attic, so we're proposing to put in these six skylights. Um, there's no other light coming into this space. Um, I'll jump out a little bit. We've offered to do some plantings. Um, if you got the site plan in, we've we'll we'll offered to do some additional uh, planting. Roof um, planting? No. Oh, oh I'm actually sure that. This is the I don't know. I'm ask for a second. Okay. Which is this group. This group right here is new from, from the original plan, things that we proposed. I can uh, pull up better picture What's that? Mark, can I just interrupt for a second? Yep. I think the, the central issue that we left with was you were going to try to reduce the number of skylines. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yes. You, we were having a discussion about that, and I, right. I'm the builder, so Jordan's right. here, okay. and he can yeah, speak. Yeah, his okay. Case, so. You know what? We really want to get as much light as possible. We just want to work out in, in the afternoons in that room. And, um, you know, aesthetically, we didn't think it, you know, I didn't know the, what the, the trade off was between four and six, but we really wanted the extra light to get to the other side of the gym. Um, we've been using it for about an hour at night periodically, typically after work. Um, yeah. I think the feedback was that it had kind of an industrial look to it. Our commercial look to it and fewer skylines would get more of a residential look to it. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. You know it's kind of the back of the, I mean, we put a lot of screening in with the, the neighbors there. If you, if you were up, you know, you could see that if they can't really see very much. I'm trying to, I've been trying to block them out, give them as much privacy and, and myself as possible. So, you know, we planted a ton of evergreens last. Uh, last year, and they have grown pretty quickly. I can't see how they're really going to have. So you don't want to reduce this guy number sky Basically, yeah. It's just, just so I can get the light across the whole 
whole gym area. The only thing I don't I get is are, you said you're using it primarily after work. Yeah. Because it's you don't have daylight after work. Well, in the winter, yeah, but when, in the summer, you know, I'm not in there at six o'clock. Yeah. So okay. it's only been winter for a few months out of the year where we have to. You know, so I don't, I don't even be using the lights really. Um, you know, and you, you know, the lights point. You know, it's not like there's a ton of light light shooting out or anything that's going to be pointing down. Mm -hmm. So it's really just, I think, the, the winter months, you might see a little bit of light out of there, but, um, but I, and I can't, you know, can't imagine them really, you know, staring up at, at that, that all, you know, there's a lot of cover there. It's the angle of that roof again, the house keep is that? I can't quite tell. Pretty Is there something on the drawing, is there a section there that I'm not seeing? Uh, right there. It looks like 45. Yeah. That's pretty, that's pretty flat. I don't know. I'm going to turn to my fellow members here. I, I, I'm concerned about pollution. Um, I don't know. Am I being overreactive? Or? No. That's good to know. Is this in the, on the front and the rear of the house? No, no, it's just on the rear. Just on the rear, okay. And because uh, I can't really tell from the plan, so it's just to the rear. Um, do you know which light? Uh, is that a north light, south light, west, south. east? What light it is? South light. That roof is facing south. south. It, does it face south? I don't know. Or, we're asking the question. Do you have a um, plan that shows sure. that orients it? Um, is, there, is there an arrow on that site plan? I can't see it on the site plan. I can't see it on the site plan. I think it's west. Okay. It's west. Um, I, 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 I can't really throw stones at, at skylights because yes. I have made one myself. And, uh, but I'm going to tell you the practical problems with them. Um, and they're facing this way. Yes, sir? Go ahead, Sue. I'm just listening to Steve. <laughs> oh, Steve's talking sorry. to Emi. You have the floor. Oh, okay, good. No, it's hard because yeah, I didn't sorry, yeah. sorry. Okay. Um, and if it's a west exposure, your attic is going to be incredibly hot in there unless you have some sort of a light control on it. And uh, I assume you're going to get uh, mechanical yeah, shades shade, and exactly. you don't have to get up I there and the open them and close them. Am I right? Yeah, motorized they, shades. They have, they have motorized shades, and the, and the roof is all foam insulation. Okay. Well, the roof might be foam, but I can't tell you what a heat collector this is. With, with, in the west, with coming right in. Mars is like full south. So, um, okay, so you have that. So that helps a lot. And, that, and uh, of course, now we come to Leslie's point. Um, when you're going to be up there at night and just have the open to see the skies and uh, just have them on all the time. I mean, I think that's everybody's concern. Is this is unusual. These are beacons right up to the sky. Yeah, I mean, I think it's unlikely that I'd be using much of the, the light, the actual light within the room because if it's 6 o'clock on, on most weekdays in the, in the you know, fall, spring, and summer, I'm not going to need much, much lighting in there except the natural light coming, I mean, which is the whole point. And then, so it would be only the winter, I think, you know, from maybe 6 to 7 p.m., you know, some light. But the light's not pointing up. You know, you, you will see it, but, it, you know, the lights are angled downwards and not, and the, and the lights may not even be near where the skylights are. I'm just trying well, because they shouldn't be yeah. under the skylights. Well, you see some light, light, but, I mean, the only people that would see it would be the, the two neighbors in the back that would be well, well covered, you know, with all the, there's a lot of screening there. We can't require yeah, shades inside, can we? Well, we can't yeah. require shades. And of course, you might be really great and never be up there and leave the lights on, but when you sell it, somebody else might. So yeah, it gets to be yeah. an issue. I don't know. Other people's thoughts? Yeah, I, I was just going to say, I mean, we've asked you to consider fewer. You really like them. I don't see how it's really our purview to say, you know, you can't have six skylights. Maybe I'm misinterpreting our meaning, but if he wants I don't think we've ever had anybody ask for something like yeah. this before. Well, I can't remember ever. I think it's only our purview in in how it affects the abutters. Right. Uh, right. Not how it affects the sky, even though we do care about that. 
We asked him to consider it. His personal preferences to that. We may have different personal preferences, but. Um, I was just going to say we, we've had a we've, we've had a um, we had a meeting. I'm not sure what kind of that meeting was, but we talked about at that meeting um, the idea of monitoring interior light, which is definitely not part of the mandate, um, and also. If there aren't of others who are concerned, who are here or who have written in, that that should be considered as well. And, and just in this, you asked for an example, and this is an example of that. Okay. It's been a second notification too. So okay. in the water construction, I would think that if somebody was unhappy with what was going on over there, they might have shown up. Right. Okay. Question from Mark. Yep. Uh, these are the kind of skylights that are, are just flat onto the roof. What's your experience? I mean, that's not my skylight. I have a, a different kind, um, but I'm always worried about leaks on skylights because I've always heard such bad stuff about them. Well, in theory, if they're flash right, um, you know, but you've also got, you know, ice dam issues. You know, he's got a, a foam insulated roof, so that should, you know, reduce. Reduce the uh, reduce any uh, any ice issues, but uh, you know, yeah, it's it's always a, a potential problem. But uh, yeah, there's a bunch of holes in your roof, basically. Yeah, and you know, I mean, there's a lot of you know roofers that probably don't install them properly, so there's a lot of contributing factors to those issues. You know, the age of the skylights and it's not our purview. Okay. What, what other aspects besides the number of skylights are we looking at tonight, Pima? Just, uh, right just 20 things. Actually, Kim had a, a point of the 20 things. Okay. She uh, so said it's all 15 green giants. She just wants to know if you can mix it up with Norris spruces, some other evergreen trees. That's fine. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, so we can do that on the side. If and then they're, they're, not, and they're, not, they're not soldier course. Yeah, they won't be that. Yeah. Okay. So what I can tell looking at this side file, which is weird, um, is... Hmm. If, could someone point to the side that those skylights are on? Is it to the back, away from the driveway. This is this is the back of the house here, and this is this is the neighbors that would be affected. This is all Jordan planted 42 trees when we put the pool in, all along, all along here. There's over 42 evergreens, and he's, the, then this is all going to be planted as part of the. This is the addition in the dark, and this is the main house. So the skylights are right on the back of the house. Up over here. Uh, so the skylights are over there. That's right. This is the new, the new three guards addition, garage addition. It was the original submission that got approved. Okay, so there's also a garage addition as part of this. This area built. here is the original. Yes, this is, in my mind or our, our mind, it's, it's an amendment to the okay. existing. How's our approved that? It's under construction right, right now. Right, yeah, That's right. why I was trying so to get the skylights around the other part. We've reduced the matter tonight to just the skylights. That's right. right. That's right. So there's, there, you're saying that there's a lot of tall trees right. opposite all, all along. You can, you can kind of, there's 42. It's all 42, 44 trees that have been planted all along here. Jordan is in agreement with the board as far as screening. Um, and, and this is all new in here, and I, sorry, I think these are all new up in here too, so to, to fill up another gap, so he wants to screen his house as much as you do, yeah. maybe more. Any other yeah, questions? Questions? Coming on answer here. Audience. Sorry, I don't know where this goes, but we've had other discussions about skylights and girls' feet, because I think you had some good thoughts last time. And um, greenhouses, you know, at what point does it become, you know, is it, is it really, it's, it's a house, I'd say, but it's got so much glass, and, you know, these are called off, you know, with windows. Um, I think it's something we probably should discuss how we're going to have some of, kind of a united policy on this, um, because I understand, you know, it's inside the house and it's something we normally don't deal with, but when we say we don't regulate the sky, well, you know, talking with Sue, we are trying to keep a dark sky town, 
I don't know how much you know skylights really add to it percentage-wise database. Um, I don't know what we've done in the past with greenhouses. I look at Dana and Emai. So I think there's not much we can do now, perhaps. But I'd like to get a better feeling of what our forthcoming policy would be on this. Yep. So you might want to write that down as Jenna going forward. Okay. That's a bylaw change or rule just, change or just. So we understand it. Yeah. Of the study. It's procedural. Yeah. Right. Okay, I think we're ready to move on. Yep. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, 13 Pigeon Hill. So, actually, let's vote on that uh, being pushed through the fifth for mm -hmm. our decision. Okay. We ought to vote. You mean we'll just have the decision for that on yeah, the fifth? Yeah, yes, that's fine. Yes. Yeah. That's great. Okay. So with 13 Pigeon Hill, I'm going to hand out a email I got from... Just one second. Yeah. So you have this. Uh, I thought we were continuing it. Yeah, exactly. Um, this being continued, so how much discussion can we have? I think we just want to discuss what date we're going to continue to. to. Okay, but we don't need to look at I'm worried about looking at any material. Okay. Let's not look at any material. Okay, that's fine. It was Request. distributed to us anyway. Yeah, request is to continue to the 26th, in short. The 26th of February. 26th of so February. Another month. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it is. Okay, fantastic. Uh, now we're down to decisions, so. Wait a second. I mean, that's all well and good, but I will be there at that meeting. I will be there at the 5th, mm -hmm. or I will be there in March, the, the first meeting in March. Well, you could call in if we're all going to be there, right? Or did you want to be there for that okay, discussion? I, I think I, I can, can propose. Here. No? Susan, I, I think I can propose something. I'll plug something with you guys. Um, in between now and that next meeting, I'm going to propose that we have a meeting with them in the same fashion that we had a meeting with 44 Oak to sort of um, address some thorny issues and perhaps arrive at solutions in the meanwhile. Or if you guys would just prefer to wait till the next meeting, that's fine too. Is that a whole board meeting or no? I, it, Alicia, I think maybe you and I could meet with the applicant to this my God and. It's just a little easier to try to address those issues um, well, in a quieter fashion. But it worked for worked very well for 44 Oak, as you recall. We don't have to do that. It's just I'm willing to do that, and I'd be very willing to do it with Alicia or whoever wants to join. Us. Well, if if Sue wants to do it, maybe you can do it around the time when she's here. She's here. Yes, yes. And that would be poor, and then we have a post to meet, but that's fine. So. Um, I would prefer to do it without a quorum, then we have to be recorded and go through all that. So I'd rather it just be a, a meeting like we had with 44 Oak. How does the, excuse me, sure. Terry Eastman, um, how does the engineer's report feed into this? Because I thought that the part of the issue there is. There is no report, right? Well, it's, I, I thought the two engineers from Niche and your engineer from Niche and their engineer from Yeah, I think Jilson their were going engineer to is not, I want to be careful going through with too much of this because it's been continued okay. and not discussed, so. Okay, but, but, all right, well, okay. Is that okay? Yeah. I'm just super careful with just staying on agenda. Okay. Um, so I just want to know the board members wish for a meeting to be held or we just want to wait until the next hearing. I don't mind an um, in-between meeting. I prefer, I think we're all interested enough to make it a quorum scenario. Okay, great. So, so why don't we just wait? People are all opinionated enough where we want. We but don't I don't mind doing a, a one in the middle. I think so a one in the available. middle would be helpful when yeah. Sue is here because we don't want to wait forever. That's my con that's things going on. And right, right, right. And she, and she has a lot more history to do. Yeah. So, uh, yes. So let's, maybe we can try to schedule a separate meeting in between. Sue's. So, I mean, when is Sue going to be here? Do we know? Um, Sue said she was going to be here on the 5th. I don't know. Okay, okay. so we'll, we'll handle she the scheduling of it offline. Yeah, That's yeah. they requested so the, the 26th, though, right? They're they requested the 26th. So, what 
what we would be able to discuss on that day with any feedback, I don't know. And then the Steve, other I lost the audio. <laughs> Sorry. And then the other matter is we should really continue when we're going to continue to a date certain. We should what? to a date certain to the day oh, we're okay. going to continue. Yes. Oh, so you're not just continuing. So you're not yet. Yeah, so that people right know. Now, when, right yeah, now. exactly. Okay. So that people know when the next time something is coming up. So, so that it's announced. You know, if not, you you should really notice it again. So. Right. Understood. Because I mean, the twenty sixth is like five weeks from now. That's a long time. Right. 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 And I think it's slightly more urgent than five, five weeks. So why aren't we scheduling it in just two weeks? What would well, that's why I'm putting that request before you. I mean, at that time, we could say it is completely within this board's purview to say, no, we're going to continue this to the 5th. On the 5th, we're going to set our conditions, whether you yes. are ready or not. Well, why don't we do that? Okay. Okay. Is that okay with you? Yeah, that is fine don't with forget me. the extra meeting. We'll just schedule it for the next planning board meeting. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's good. I think that makes everyone feel comfortable. Okay. Now to the decision. Uh, you want to start with 148 children? Yeah, go in order. Who needs a copy? Dana? Yes. Did you get my message? Did you get my notes? On yeah, the yeah, I got your notes. I already made the changes. If you kill the tree, you might as well. Actually, I have one. Oh, okay. I have one where you made the changes, actually. That would be something I'm going to look at. Okay, all good. I'll check here. Did I make any changes to this? I have it written in an email right here, and I was going to do okay. that after. All right, so you're just going to tell them. All right. So, so you reviewed them and have changes? Yes. Oh, I can read your changes. So the yeah, that's it. Yeah. Go ahead. For changes for the applicants proposed to install a new geothermal heating system in the home in order to do so, a reliable water source must be secured to supply the water for the heat pump the geothermal unit. So you're adding the water source. Well, I'm adding a reason for why they had to remove the stone wall oh, God, and bring a truck in. There's there's no mention of that beyond it. doesn't say, it doesn't talk about drilling the well. Is that what I sent you? Yeah, it's like big wolf box there. Yeah, course. hang on. And then the second part was the applicant proposed to temporarily remove a portion of the stone wall within the right of way to allow truck access to drill the well. That to reconstruct the wall using the same stones in the same configuration. So as to cause minimal impact on the scenic road. And that's all I had to write. So, so Leslie. Leslie has a similar I'm, Yeah, I'm just that. wondering, in the future, because I must admit, I thought it was all going to be incorporated in the document. We could all sort of look at it together. Yeah. And I've got more on, on the design. Well, I just thought it would be confusing. For we're not doing it that way. We're, if it's incorporated, we're, we're all looking at the same document that's emailed to us. Yes. And then we come here. And talk about what the changes are. If he if he incorporates your changes before the meeting, okay. then we have to look at the document all over. Right. All, exactly. all I was going to suggest that I thought he would have it in either a different color or font or something so he could read it in context. I have yours on the side as like one copy here. Look, I yeah. mean, go ahead. It's fine. It just yeah. it's easier than hearing it. I like looking at things. Okay. So. But what yours Steve said, I, I mentioned that right? yours is yeah. probably exactly the same as mine, yeah. or close to. Yeah, I think Sue and I are very close. I think the. Only thing that I had was I'd like to the same pat on the head that Diana did about going geothermal. I'd like to say that again and to uh, send it to copy sustainable. Okay. I think that's all I had in there that was different from Sue's. Um, actually, I have the comparison here. So it's nothing like having three copies. Yeah, yeah exactly. wanted, that's why I'm saying it was all in one spot. You wanted photos of the removal of stones, which she kind of right, same thing. On. So photos. Good. Um, so we yeah. Yeah, it's it very similar, actually. Yeah, so Steve, did you have any changes? Well, the only substantive change I had was also similar, but, I, you know, in item number two, the reconstructed walls shall be dry laid with no more use. I think we have to say more than that, which is what Sue said. You know, the same style, whatever. I said okay. the reconstructed walls shall match the existing wall and be dry laid. Right. Whatever the wording right. is, your wording was good, Sue. You probably have good wording. Yeah, I mean, too, we, we Leslie, mean, but right. it, it just needs to be more detailed than the way it's currently right. written. So, how should I do this moving forward? Should I pick one person's or do you want to decide? <laughs> That's why I have confusions on it. Um, I, I think 
I don't care. I think Just make your best different. effort and we'll review it. If you're nervous yeah. about yeah. which one, but you and I will review it. Okay. But, but I think it's helpful to basically say, you know, have the three different ones and we can, you know, because this time they're all the same. In the future they might be different. I think reviewing this ahead of time makes a world of sense. But it's nice if you can, if there were there changes, whether it's color, font, or whatever it is, um, then we have a better chance of yeah. picking the good ones. And I can have the whole document comparing those. Yeah, the right. issue was I didn't get these until I, I, I don't think he's going to be able to do that, is my prediction. Unless we have like a collaborative system where we're all working on Word Online or something, that'd be very right. easy. But if he gets three emails into him from each of us, he's going to have a hard time putting that together. And it won't we, do we have to have it exactly. by a certain date? Yes, exactly. Yeah, we tried this and it. And it if we were all using Word, seem problematic. If we were all using Google Doc or we're all using Word Online, we could do that. Google Doc. Otherwise, he'll spend three days trying to put our three comments together. Yeah, trying to figure out which. I mean, it sounds good in theory. It sounds good. But can we? I mean, can we use Word Online at the town? No. You know that. Yeah. No. You can't use Word Online before the meeting because that's basically deliberation. Okay, got it, yeah. got it. Then I'll have to come prepared next so time. So we're, we're hands Yeah, I think everybody yeah. should come with their They're changes okay. and then yeah. recite them. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. And then you can yeah. hand, hand to him. Yeah. data yeah. or email and changes. And then he goes yeah. through. Yeah. changes because you have two split I mean, it's it's 20th century, <laughs> but... Exactly. But we're of that old-fashioned way. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah. trying to preserve old ways of doing things. Yeah. Temporarily, you don't put an advert in the middle of the Bless you. Very good. 15 pine frogs. <laughs> <laughs> 15 pine frogs. Yeah, I have. Do you want me to give you the notes? Yeah, yeah. give yours to Leslie and let Leslie recite them. Yeah, that's good. That's the easiest way of doing it. Yeah, we're inching along. Is that all it was? This is the main stuff in here. Really? Okay, so I thought it was more pages. Uh, are, is everybody ready well, for someone to recite? Have you guys reviewed it? Comments. But, uh, Alicia, have you reviewed yours? I don't remember if I reviewed 15 times. Okay. I'll just look over the other Okay. okay. Um, so, Steve, mine will be the easiest. So, I'll go yeah. first, okay? So, I noticed the CC was missing on page 5. B. Yeah. And then I wanted to give them uh, credit somehow on preserving seeing views, the way they broke up the mass at Steve's direction, Steve's encouragement. So uh, maybe Steve can provide words. I have that. something about okay. that there. And then um, we need to have a discussion about the fact that, at least for the time being, we've taken out a requirement for wells, yes. uh, but we've left in a requirement for no connection between the irrigation and MWRA water supply. Yes. Wait, we've taken out the requirement for wells? Yes. Yes. Since when? So, you might, why don't you leave that to So, after following with the historical water analysis, one of the findings was that there was not really a strong con correlation between water, between reduced water usage and having an irrigation well. There is a very strong correlation between irrigate overall water usage and summer months, which tends to be irrigation. So it's it's pretty conclusive, at least in the working group. And Sue, if you um, want to chime in and say, you know, what your what you felt the group was saying as well. But and, and the water table is not right. Yeah. Because we thought. Yeah. So that's that's one. You know, we the wells aren't possibly doing the good we thought they were going to do. But it does eliminate using MWRA water. What's oh sorry we. Having a well eliminates using w, uh, MWRA water, so I don't understand how it doesn't yeah, reduce it the use of MWRA water. It did it, it. There were still a number of properties, and a significant number um, of properties, who had wells, who had irrigation wells, that were still using into the 10,000 gallon. Well, it seems like this has to be a discussion, not just a exactly That's why I brought, the exactly right. why I brought it up. Yeah. That's exactly why I brought it up. And, and, but I mean, not just, yeah. I think we may be jumping the gun a little bit, but I think yeah. that the water use group is leaning towards that this is perhaps, it was a nice theory, but in practice it doesn't seem to have really reduced uh, or done what we thought it would do. But what about the people who were here last serious. week and we yeah. said you have well, to have a well, and now... <laughs> I, I well, I mean, that can I ask you get question? new information, you should. Can, can I got, okay, didn't 
chair of the PBC come and talk to you today about how some questions he had, how the data was put together, and that things don't really follow very well in some areas. Data he had some questions. Some I mean, and I, I think we can address them, but I don't think they substantially take apart the findings. Well, I, th I think I think more. I think the, the the report needs to be questioned a little bit more. I'm not saying it's off, but I think so, it needs to be questioned a little bit more. Well, I'm questioning it because common sense would tell you that if you're using. 10,000 fewer gallons of MWRA water because you have a well and you're using 10,000 gallons from the well, mm -hmm. that it's a reduction. Now, maybe you're doing something else. I don't know, but so it doesn't yeah. make any sense. Right. The other okay. argument that they made against the okay. well is that there's ecological <laughs> damage caused by wells that yeah. we weren't considering. Yeah. That's a different story. There's I didn't say that was another fact. And also, there's, there's no way to tell what get you wells are pumping. It's not metered. Yeah. I mean, maybe people drill them. But they, you know, and you've got some of it hooked up. But there, it's unmetered water use. We really, yeah, a, we don't know. Yeah. It's very hard to imagine. Okay, so yeah. D Diana, do you have? I'm, I'm just shocked to hear this. This pro so I don't understand the process. One day I came in and everyone was required to have a well, and today apparently not anymore. That's why what? I brought up the topic, Diana. But That's so exactly what, what we're talking about. What's the process by which this we're is? Trying to figure it out. We're trying to figure it out right now. So, so I, as I say, I think we need to. It was a presentation made to the board, but I think that I haven't been part of it, and I have some questions. Some of it's just basically said, I don't know it's working. It's helpful to have the people put it together, talk with us, you know, so we really understand where the data yeah. is coming from. And I certainly um, think it warrants an item on our agenda. To, we're suddenly changing a long-standing board policy. Yeah. I don't think we should change it yet. That's why I think we have to discuss it. Right. To change it yeah, we have until to discuss it. we it's have on the agenda as a separate item. And people would be interested in, I think, in that discussion, especially the last people we forced to put a well in. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just one report. I, I think yeah. it's really premature to change our regulations that one report. Yeah, but there should also be public feedback and like on our agenda and I mean it's exciting to hear that we're progressing but I didn't even know that there was a progression. I mean you can't tell from this agenda that that we're going to discuss wells tonight. It, it would be a very educated understanding of this agenda to know that was going to happen. So just to let you know, we, we, I, I, I don't mind getting it out there that we were discussing wells tonight. We were discussing this decision, the fact that it didn't have a well, that's why it came up. So mm -hmm. I want to be really clear on that. We're not trying to make any policy yeah. change here. So we're we'll just back to the old So therefore, let's go back to the old that, That's why I brought it up. It was different than before. So we should probably stop talking about it, right? Right, right. Wait, no, exactly. So we, we found on that a future something agenda. changed. Yeah. So my thought overall on this is mm -hmm. we need to lean heavily on the water group. I look to them for direction, right? Okay. They should give us direction on what the planning board should be doing with respect to wells and with respect to irrigation. You know, I lean heavily, in my opinion, is we are meeting early in February. Are we not yep. I, I just don't feel like we're experts in water to be right. making decisions or changes in yeah, policy. Well, going I, think, I think it was a tad premature to do this. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. It would be thoroughly um, everybody agreeing and understanding what was going on. I mean, it is sort of a really big, okay, so it is a big change. Yes. This, this applicant will get news then. So we'll get, that we'll get news that this they is have a well on site. All of them, the two that we're going to see today, do. So it's not going to change. They have wells already. Yeah, it has no public. I don't think they have public water there. I think they're on a well. Okay. Anyway. Okay. Great. Is it sure, Pinecroft. Pinecroft. No. No. Pinecroft so, is public. Water. Yeah. But help help me out with some precision of what we did in the past. This, says, this doesn't say you have to build a well, but it does say that you can't connect to MWRA for irrigation. That's what we say currently? Yeah. What the decision before you says. says well, shall the procedure have was... The procedure was no irrigation to be supplied by MWRA water. All irrigation shall be supplied by a well. So it's not... Let's add that back here. Okay. Yeah. If any irrigation... So it's not going to be a surprise to the applicant. That they can't connect to MWRA. No, that was yeah, that was good. never on the table. Okay, all right. Are, are just a surprise. About 148 Southern right now. That's yeah. why I was. Yes, yeah, we're 15 pine yeah. crops. Because yeah. they're they're on the well as well. Yeah. Okay. Great. Perfect. Okay, that was good. That was what I stumbled across. <laughs> 
So again, all hail to the water group. Okay. All hail. Yeah. All hail. <laughs> I'm done for them. Who goes next? Steve. Steve. Okay, so on page four, um, the lot width of 119 feet average, doesn't that make it non-conforming? So, Which property is? I'm sorry, I can't follow it. We're doing 15 Pinecroft. Pine They're just all good. Um, and, or is it 120? I don't know why we're talking about an average lot width. Is it 125 at the? So it's a corner street? lot, so I'm not sure the technical terms. Uh, if it's the average of the two streets there, I see. Both Mockville and Pinecroft. Well, I think we need to figure that out because this makes it look like it's not conforming. It's the one that it's that has its conforming frontage too. So it would be Pinecroft. So yeah, in that case, if so it, should I take out average and put yeah, it just put it. It's it's only one, and it's basically property line to property line. So and what and you don't know what that dimension is, but it is larger than one twenty five. Oh yeah, I'll double check with him to see it, but it should be larger. Which should be or okay, basically in the eye. And then um, all those P's and M's. I don't think anyone will know what that means, and it obviously means Pinecroft and Montvale. Um, and you say Pinecroft and Montreal, so I don't see why you need to say Yeah, I can just take out the P's and the M. So um, <laughs> and then the asterisk really only pertains to, um, the asterisk doesn't pertain to this lot because it conforms no matter what. It conforms to the current zoning bylaw. So I think putting that there when, it, when it's not relevant is confusing. What is relevant is that this house is, or the RGA is greater than 10% of the lot area. Mm -hmm. That's why we're looking at this. Mm -hmm. So I would put an asterisk next to the 5,462 and say something like, you know, it's greater than 10% of the lot area uh, requiring site plan review. That's a good point. Like that. um, then on page five, Item 1B, those along with six trees within the wetland buffer, I think we need to say, are they failing trees? Like, why are they coming down? Yeah, I double check. There's actually no trees coming out of the wetland buffer. So, okay, so you can I think I was just watching the minutes and I must have heard something wrong. Okay. And, wrote that. and then on item 1D, as Tony mentioned, rather than saying the applicants were able to move the proposed house slightly, which I don't think they really did. Right. Two feet. I, I, well, I said they were able to break up the massing slightly yeah. facing the abutter at 31 Montvale Road. Perfect. And, and add additional screening along the rear property line. Uh, but you can tweak that. Yeah. And then um, an item E minimize site disturbance. Um, So you're saying the septic fields position at the new driveway location where tree removals are limited. I meant to swap, so it should be the driveway is positioned at the new septic location. Um, okay. So Same like tree removals are limited to the driveway coming out or put, being put in. So sorry. So it's the new driveway is positioned. Yeah. So they changed the curb cut, so it's the new driveway location. Okay. So septic field isn't in there at all. No, it is. What, what if you said the septic field is positioned at the new driveway location, which limits the amount of tree removal? Yeah. Is that what you're yeah, saying? Yeah, you heard that now? I did. All right. Um, and then on the next page, is that correct that the AC units and generator are on the north side? Is it the north side, Pinecroft side, facing Pinecroft? Double check that. Mm -hmm. I, I don't remember where they are relative to the house, but it seemed odd that they would be facing Pinecroft and not like yeah. not west or, or, or maybe south. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, same thing for eight. That also says north side. And just to be clear, the last sentence: the rear side of the proposed house is close. Yeah, that's the 25 foot zoning <laughs> setback I said is close yeah. to the abutter of 31 it's block close to that house. Oh. just to make that <laughs> good. Good. in fact it's attached <laughs> it's close yeah, it's 
That's definitely close. And that's it for me. I have one easy one. Let's do it. Sure. All right. On page uh, seven, under F, screen objection features, Canadian analogs have always first said sugar maple is French first, as well as roadies. Roadies is just a little bit too casual. Right, should be should be rhododendron. For a legal document. You are correct. Thank you very much. That's all, my, that's all I have to say on this. Maybe we should put the Latin names instead. <laughs> <laughs> the Maximus? Is that what they're called? <laughs> For everything. <laughs> Nothing but Latin names. Okay, that's actually the way we should do it. There are other changes I have that are not, they're more than on here. Do you have them or not? I thought uh, it was like even more, really, right? For, I was just using that as a template for me to look at during the, okay. the discussion. I wasn't sure you were using that. Okay, well, I'm now stuck using that, so okay. you don't I have any sure other. Okay, I'm sure if you're going to bring your stuff. Oh, well, I'll show, I'll, I'll, i cheap about paper. Okay, yeah, um, that's what I was trying to save, too. All right, well, I, here are other ones I made, but I'll just mention the ones that I've got here, then. Um, under A, under on page 5, um, like it says, site design uses the existing built area, but the new house is larger than the existing by however many square feet, which is basically say how much bigger it is. And then I'd like to add something to the effect of, given the larger footprint, the site is especially tricky as it is bounded on two sides by roads and the third side by wetlands. Because, I mean, it does use the existing, but it's really crammed in there. It's done nicely, but it's a big house on a small lot, and I think we should own up to that. Are we going to actually say tricky? I don't know. I That's a tricky. technical term. <laughs> it's tight, or tricky, however you want to say it. Challenging. Challenging. Yeah. Yeah. Challenging sounds good. Tricky. No roadie, no tricky. tricky. Yeah, yeah. No, tricky, no dicky, right. Challenging. Exactly. I like that. Yeah. Um, so then it does follow the gentle slope of the natural topography. I, I'm not really sure it does, because I thought there was not really a slope. I thought it was fairly flat. Yeah. But, yeah. So, don't it's enough of a that. slope that from the garage side to the to the um, side facing the wetland that they the slope gains the walkout level. Okay, all right. It, it is sloping. Okay, that's why I asked. Um, then uh, on B, I don't know if you said this already, Steve, but we should take out right and left and we just say Montvale and uh, and uh, Pinecroft. So it should be undisturbed natural buffer of approximately however many feet. We should say how big, how big that buffer is. Will be retained to the east, in parentheses, Montvale, and approximately so many feet, question mark, on the west, take out left side uh, on the lot. And then you, you had the stuff about the dead trees coming out. Wait, on the, it, what else can you say besides left? It's west. Direction. Oh, I see, just do east or west. Yes, because okay. otherwise we're going to stay Yeah, yep. yep. okay. Um, this one I didn't quite understand. It says, the very end you talk work within the wetland buffer is limited to wetland extensions of 100 feet. So, what, I just meant that, that the laws of the wetland um, by a lot of the 100 feet. So, if you can see here, what are you saying? This so, there's a 100 foot it? buffer here, but they actually have a little bit of grading, and then there's like this um, kind of step out. Okay, so, so I just meant that it's limited to the bylaw of this 100 foot buffer. Okay, so I guess it is in the 100 foot. Right, yes, so there are allowed to do minimal stuff like that, which is the minimal. Did we know about that and allow that? Was that ConCom? Is that us? Who is that? Yeah, they already went through ConCom before us. And, and got they that allowed that. Yeah. Well, so you could just say that we're. Yeah, that would be. Well, in a hundred foot buffer, you're allowed to do Com something Com like that. Yeah, right. Like minimal wetland buffer. Right. So, if, if Alicia's just right, I think just say work within the wetland buffer has been minimal work, which includes stone wall, walkout, whatever it is, has been previously approved by ConCom. Right. Yeah. Okay. okay. And what happens is everybody's gone and somebody tries to figure it around what's happened and you, you need the history here. Um, I think for uh, C, it's a new house. I don't think there are any proposed additions, so it's just to say the new house will conform. You mean the additional size of the new house? Is that what you were trying to say? Where are we at? Um, C. C. It says additions. There aren't any additions. It's all brand new. The house. Yeah, the, yeah, house. the new house. The house will conform. Yeah, the new house, whatever. Um, and I should just say, and is cited to maintain. You don't have to say in such a way, just is cited to maintain. Um, uh, under F, if we don't have roadies and we don't have tricky, then we don't have understories. You can say in various understory shrubs. 
various participants. <laughs> and then a very end where it says we'll be screened by everybody, RBVD, however you want to say it. I always get paranoid. Can we put placed in a staggered natural cluster for arrangement? Yeah, I can see that. Okay. okay. Um, I put a period. Okay, there you go. Under three, um, it says runoff from the site will be no more impactful than before. I think you've got to take out impactful. That's a judgmental call. It should be no more than before. Okay. Um, I'm staying away from irrigation. Uh, and I think it should be under five. It says, and the relocated driveway and a curb cut, because you're actually talking about both. Yeah. Um, and the scale proportion of the proposed house, I believe, is at the high side of the housing sizes in the neighborhood. It's not in the middle or lower. I'm not positive, but I thought it was in the high side. Yeah, it would be in the and higher think, side, and if I have the highest part. Well, I think we should state that, because right now it seems like, oh, it's right in the middle, and that's not true. Okay. Um, and the stone wall should say dry lane, please. And I think that's all I got here. There's, I think more in some of the other pages, but I think you can pick that up. And it's yeah, I think we can take useful. those for you. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing I have left then is, um, D, preserve scenic views. So the relocated curb cut will improve the scenic view from the abutter with the additional screening that is approved. That mm -hmm. doesn't make sense. So I just say, it's unclear, just say that the relocated curb cut with the additional screening will improve the scenic view. Okay. Well, I guess the, the question is if why, it's why, yeah, if the curb, if the curb cut is moving, is what improves the scenic view? Is it because the other driveway no longer has sloped down it, or it's not directly facing the house that's across the street? It's okay, so the that's what it is. So okay, so just say the relocated curb cut and additional screening will improve the view from the blah blah blah. Because the way you have it, it's the butter has additional screening. Right. Okay. It's it's the opposite. Yeah. I'm going to go to the th third and then approve each one going backwards. We forgot to approve them as we go. Yo, you didn't take a vote on the last no, one? We didn't no, we Okay, yeah. yeah. So let's catch up right now, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think you should catch up right now. Yeah. Just a point of clarification. So for 15 Pine Top, are they going to have a well or not? Yeah, they have yes. a well closed on site. They, they already have, have a well. For irrigation, a well would be required. Okay. Right. Okay, so let's go back to the first. Is that okay? So I, I move that we approve the um, scenic road right of way permit uh, for to, to temporarily remove the stone wall for 148 Sudbury Road as modified. Right. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Sue? Aye. Okay, unanimous. Next. 15 pine crop. <laughs> Go, Steve. I move that we approve the RGFA site plan approval for 15 Pinecroft as modified. There a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Sue? Aye. Great, unanimous. All right. Then we're on to 140 country. You still have got within? Um, I, I think yeah. I printed that just because that was. Okay. I have no comments. On which one? This one? Yeah, this is 140 country. Steve, you ready? Yep. Okay, go ahead. So, um, where you have 200 feet on the front edge and lot width, I think you need an asterisk after that, which we refer to the asterisk below. Yeah. But then that should read something like per section, blah, 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 minimum street frontage and lot width requirements are 200 in single family residence district A for lots created before May 13th, 1997. So that it's clear that it pertains to this particular lot. And on the next page, and that's everything now. Thank you. Thanks. On the next page, let's 
skip over the bad stuff. In item 1D, um, the order's a little wrong in that last sentence, so it should be various evergreens are being planted to screen the view of the pool addition from abutters. Uh, you're not screening the um, right. abutters from this pool. I want to look at those abutters. <laughs> I had the same problem with the last one, so that's uh, correct. Yeah. Um, okay. Can I pop in quick right here because yeah. we run that under preserved natural historic features. Um, the proposed retaining wall behind the pool have allowed the applicants to. Should that be has allowed? Yes, yes. It was. I, I was skipping over the grammar. Okay. I like the grammar. All right. That's our value add. I won't <laughs> skip over it next time. I'm, I'm going to delete that sentence anyway because okay. Leslie made the comments about the trees coming out when they're not supposed, supposed to be actually coming out. So we have a second hearing. We have a second hearing on the fifth for those three trees to be removed. So I should put that language there. Okay. So actually, there's there is three trees being removed on the property. I just don't. No, he said there are no trees allowed to be removed. There won't be until our next hearing, which is what they're proposing to have three trees removed as an amendment to this. What? Yeah. Why? Why are we doing this? Because we closed the hearing originally, and. Um, couldn't continue the hearing with the three trees until we reopened it to a different event. So we're not saving those three trees. <laughs> no. We might be. We well, haven't made wait, a no, decision. No, 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 no. It's just a two. In in this particular decision, we'll say no uh, trees. Right. 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 Stay focused on the decision. Oh wait, yeah. we're going from no trees to three. I thought we were going from three to no. From this one, we're going to go from no trees to be removed, and then the amendment. Which Forget is the amendment. Forget yeah. it. So no, no trees. Say no trees. No, no trees. trees no. Yeah. No so amendment. If they can't yeah. build their pool and their patio, then they can't do that because these three trees can't go out. We'll have a discussion. How could they yeah. Um. And then um, in item F, one F. I just added the word new on the second sentence. The new evergreens will provide screening for the pool. And then we have the well issue again for item four, so you'll have that back. Um, and then, let's see. Oh yeah, so item F1, what is that all about? Those the three trees? So those are the three trees that I was trying to note that cannot come out until we continue this hearing. So don't confuse it. Yeah, yeah, yeah I wouldn't, again. there's no need for that. Okay. Well, I just wanted to verify that those three trees cannot be removed. No I want to have a special to be removed. They should not be coming out. No trees are yeah, that's not a special yeah. condition. And I wanted to put a condition just to state that even though there was some, you know, miscommunication at the last meeting. Because they stated, yeah. Well, you have. There will be no trees removed on the property. Yeah. That is one. All right. I just wanted to be. More trees I just wanted to reiterate the point. Well, it's just, what you're saying. But it's the not. They are coming down. Eventually. They will be a yeah. Mm -hmm. So I just want to make sure that didn't mm -hmm. take them out. Mm -hmm. I put a special condition on that. I can take that out and just leave yes. it. Yes. Yes. Don't confuse the two of the things that haven't happened. Okay. So I'll take that out. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just stick with the no trees to be removed. They want to come back and ask for different discussion. Okay, that's it for me. Thank you, Steve. Leslie? Um, I'm trying to get the right piece of paper here. Um, under A, um, I'd like to be a little more specific with that and say regrading is confined to the immediate location of the proposed pool and pool house instead of just minimal grading. Okay. Um, we have the no trees. Then under D, um, I think it should basically be something like the applicant is adding a variety of trees and shrubs to take out an understory at the front of the property. I like the understory. I, like the understory. I don't know. I know, I'm joking. <laughs> okay. <laughs> those, are, those are understories. Exactly. Um, then I think it would be good if you could add something like the new plantings will be replaced in the natural design to reduce the formality of the existing three foot high uh, driveway pillars, which were built without review. And approval by the board. Yeah, that, that's good. That's more specific than nestling. Yes. Okay. Um, I would take out will be yeah. nestled in the proposed blah blah blah, and I'd leave the various evergreens are being planted to screen the view of the pool. In addition, I'd write from the abutters. From the abutters, yes. Okay. Um, and then under E, um, I do 
as there were concerns at the site walk due to the elevational change between the proposed pool and the existing house and the neighbor's house. And then you can get into that stuff you have, and I'd call it the pool deck. Um, and then at the very end, I'd say there are no other changes to the grading aside from the pool, not separate from the pool. Um, for F, um, how about the proposed findings at the front will provide a vegetative screen rather than more sufficient buffer in keeping, in keeping with the existing neighborhood period. Because the neighborhood has certain cadence which would be nice to set up. It's a big green splotch in the middle of other things. And that's it. Good. You did. Alicia? Mm -hmm. you, we've covered mine. Okay. And Sue, anything else? You, you heard my grammatical correction. Okay. I heard it better. I'm fine. Okay. Ready, Steve? Go for it. Oh, no, don't stray. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I move. Might as well go for three. Might as well. I move that we approve the RGFA site plan approval for the pool house addition at 140 country with the modifications noted. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Aye. Great. All in rule. Next item. I tried my best. Like I talked to the me. state ethics uh, attorney twice. And um, I can't vote on this. So, and Leslie? I can't vote on it. Leslie had the same. And we can't do it with Sue. With Sue, 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 Sue. Sure. Okay, so it'll just be. So we need to just pass over it. Pass over it. We'll it's do it on the 5th. It's going to be on the 5th. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you're on. We're, I'm sorry, can you just state what we're passing over for those? For sure, the election of Vice Chair. Thanks. Okay. okay. Uh, town Planner Report. Um, we. Tomorrow is the select board meeting to discuss 255 Merriam. That is all I will say about it. Um, fourth is site visit for 31 Beach. And then our next meeting is on the 5th. Uh, is tomorrow's meeting at 7? Tomorrow's meeting is at 7, yes. Okay. Uh, next item. Um, wanted to get into this a little bit. We have our survey up and going. We started repeat getting responses, but we do want to up our response rate. Um, if you take a look at this, this is kind of live data as it's been going. Yeah, don't show it to them. Okay. You're spilling your candy. Uh, <laughs> show them the candy later. Okay. But we're at, we're at about, as you can see, we're at about 350 responses. So we want to get, we want to get higher than that. Um, so the interest yeah. level, in my opinion, is higher than I was expected in the pilots. That's all I'll say. Yeah. I mean, I, I thought, you know, I thought we were doing really good at, you know, 300 and 100 the first day, which, you know, I still think is, but more is better than that. Um, water map. Before you go on, <laughs> I was just, I don't know when you can use an email blast or anything or a, or a phone call thing to remind people to do it. Because people hmm. think about it and forget about it, so maybe another email blast saying. Saying, yeah. Well, we have another. Um, I know Kara's doing another round of Facebook postings okay. and you know okay. putting them in use. So yeah, we will. And you have another ad. Yeah. So and we'll do it. We'll do it. We're gonna do another advertisement. Though. I have a question so. about the signs that are all over town. Yeah. Who paid for those? We did. Didn't yes. We? And so that was from the planning board discretionary budget. That's from the consulting budget. Yes. And who's who decides on that? So, we did as as a project this board was taking up. So which was decided a while back. That we would put up signs. No, I just, we, we do this study and then it came with advertising. Okay, yes. no, I just wonder because they're not, I mean, like the JST signs were used for five different projects mm -hmm. and just not sustainable to put a bunch of big plastic signs on. True, That's okay. all. fair enough. Just saying that, you know, the emails, great, the, you know, town website, great, but I just think the signs are not How many sustainable. Signs how, how many signs were there? Like a lot. <laughs> so about eight, ten, more. Oh, no, there, more than that. there, I think there's at least ten out there. Street. there's, no, there's the three entrance. There's one on church. So 
So how many think it is right opposite you? I imagine, <laughs> but yes, it is one on church. Because I remember seeing like one in the library and one over there by the uh, Case Little Park. But I'm trying to think where else there. There is the Case Park. There's um, there's one on North Avenue. Um, Basically, where everybody stops in traffic, saying, "Why the heck yeah, are you stuck in traffic?" Yeah, that's, that's yeah. I tried to put them on the main routes. There's one by the school. There's about three on South. On South Ave, there's, I think there's about. Yeah, you've there's got nine boxes to go over here. Okay, yeah. Um, water master plan. We're meeting again on. We're meeting again on in February to kind of again go over data. We'll cover some of the points. I think that was covered tonight. We'll review that. I, you know, I understand there's to dos on that. Um, signs. I think we're delayed on. Are on visitors list. included in the? Water group. I mean, can I attend, for example? Can we crash? Um, well, the only thing is that we, if we got enough there, that would be quorum, then it would be problematic. Well, planning board members. Got it. Yeah. Got it. And it's uh, Sue representing us. Sue representing okay. us. Yeah. So it'll take one more. What's that? It'll take one more. It'll take one more. One more. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So. We know what we're doing with tree canopy management. We spent a lot of time on that tonight. Uh, scenic road procedures, I don't know, do you want to talk anything about this tonight, Tony? I, I, we're going to try to sum it up in around a month, so we'll have a good report back. Okay. I think we've had a couple good meetings, Alicia, mm -hmm. Emai, and I, and the participants, I think, are feeling positive about it. And Steve, we took some time and we quote set expectations at the meeting. So we talked directly about your concern, and everybody understood. I think we'll have a good report back to you guys with some, you know, things to think about and maybe maybe some recommendations. What about including actual people who live, uh, representative people who actually live at Scenic Roads? We've got two. Yes, but we're maybe different point of view.